Cutter, good afternoon and a very warm welcome from the Basin Reserve as SENZ's coverage of the summer of cricket continues as the White Ferns by host to England. The series uh, fascinatingly poised after three games. New Zealand pulling one out of the proverbial, out of the fire. It looked like they were going to slump to a 3-0 uh, series loss with a couple to play, but it's an incredible fight back late on uh, d- well, late on the day. On Sunday it was, and Nelson has uh, breathed life into the series and given New Zealand just a chance. But England have been bolstered by the return of some big name players. More on that in just just a moment. Can't wait to bring you the action of this uh, game. Number four uh, between New Zealand and England. Live from the Basin Reserve. Our coverage thanks to Razine Quality Paint and Colours for your summer projects. It is a windy old day in the capital. Very strong northerlies are whipping through the capital city. The good news is it's one of those days as I jokingly sent a message to Jacob Warham as he was making his way from his palace in uh, Palmerston North for the game. Uh, it's one of those days where the, uh, the rain might not be able to hit the ground. Then we had a passing shower for about five, ten minutes, but the covers are off. The two skippers out in the middle and are waiting the uh, official toss of the coin. Uh, we will hear from uh, the respective skippers uh, courtesy of TVNZ uh, as we build up to this game starting at uh, 1 o'clock. Jacob Borum, though, wonderful to see you, friend. How are you doing? Of course, my friends have a special place in your heart. Or was it 2018-2022 bowling coach, building coach, of course, now with uh, the Hines. Uh, I- I'm sure you were as pleased as anyone going around that they were able to keep the series alive. Most definitely, and, and good morning. Is it morning? No, afternoon. It is oh, afternoon. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, and as we speak, actually, the sun's coming out, so that's great news for the, the match ahead. But, yeah, special place in my heart. Heavily involved in women's cricket. Yeah. Uh, the White Ferns, you know, they're a developing side with some actually world-class players, and, and they need to show that again today. They showed it in Nelson and got one out of the fire there, and needs to happen again today against a much strengthened, strengthened England team. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know you've been out and had a look at the surface. There was so much talk about the surface for the test match played here recently. It was quite unusual. Sp- spitting turn. Plenty of bounce. There's always pace and bounce here, but uh, I think that the, the pace of the turn really uh, did surprise people. And before we bring you Toss and team details, let's get your thoughts on uh, pitch conditions here with our PGG Rights and Turf pitch report. Uh, thanks to PGG Rights and Turf, New Zealand's turf industry experts. I went out there and I thought, it's that two-toned colour. You've got a lush green coating of grass, but underneath looks quite dry. You went out and perused. What do you think? Uh, uh, you're absolutely right. Like you said, it looks dry and brown but there's green grass on it you know and um, sort of 50 cents each way and you're dead right though I mean even from up here from the commentary booth it's you can see brown and green in the same pitch and it doesn't mean it's sort of motley and coloured or it's there's not necessarily bare patches so I'm a little bit unsure myself. I think it will have good bounce though. I think this season we've seen some good bounce. I was here with the Central Hines for three games this yep. year. One T20 and two 50 over games and in particular in the 50 over games Rosemary Mayer who is here with the White Ferns and Gaging who's got a bit of pace got some good bounce. So I'm expecting that today. Unsure of the pace but um, look, it's 2020 cricket. The boundaries are in. The sun is coming out. As I said, I think we're in for some runs as well. Uh, it was interesting when Sophie Devine won the toss in at Nelson ahead of game number two. She said, oh, I wasn't really sure the reasons why I've decided to, to, to bowl first. I think it was a function of having not played a T20 international mm. at that venue for eight years. Of course, they know this. Uh, but, but that uncertain nature of the, the pitch, would you lead down? I might just have a sneaky bowl first. Yeah, look, I think it happens more than you probably realise in yeah. terms of, got no idea... <laughs> <laughs> and hope that you lose a toss. I mean, from head coach, well, I suppose when I was assistant coach or a specialist coach, you kind of get asked in your opinion, but really doesn't matter what you think, you know. And then suddenly from being a head coach this year with the Hines and then with New Zealand A for a couple of weeks, it's like, oh, geez, I actually have to learn how to read a pitch a bit better. But um, I think a lot of the time it's like you can make the decision the afternoon before or, yeah. you know, when you come down to the ground two hours four, but you actually wait and see what's happening with the overheads, you know, the, the, the time difference between peeling the covers off and actually the, the toss of the coin can make a difference. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens today. And, and honestly, it's 2020 cricket. The pitch isn't going to change a lot. Yep. You've just got to make sure whatever you're doing first, whatever discipline, you do it well. 
Uh, that was our PGG Rights and Turf Pitch Report. New Zealand's turf industry experts are PGG Rights and Turf. Great to have their uh, support throughout our summer of cricket. Uh, the other thing we need to make mention, that that wind is really strong. It's going to make the boundaries particularly short when you're hitting down breeze. Uh, it is an oval Essentially, all the boundaries somewhere between 60 to 64 metres. Uh, so it's a, a true cricketing uh, venue. And I think, courtesy of TVNZ and our wonderful support staff uh, behind the scenes, we can head out to the middle for the toss. Yeah, ANZ coin toss time here at Wellington. I've got the two captains alongside me here that night from England, Sophie Devine from New Zealand, our ICC match referee Trudy Anderson, and today's ANZ coin toss kid, Rosalie Jane. She's 10 years old, goes to Nio School, says all the Wellington players are her favourites. And Rosalie, if you could pass that coin over to Sophie and we'll get things underway. Heads, please. Oh, we're getting a little bit of a winning run with this, Sophie. Another toss win. What are you going to do first today? Uh, we're going to have a bowl first today. And reasons behind that? A little bit of local hometown knowledge? Um, yes, I guess. But I think there's a, obviously a fresh wicket. It's a bit of grass on it. But we always know that in Wellington that it can flatten out pretty quickly. So we just want first opportunity to bowl on this, on this green wicket. And a wonderful performance from your side. And Nelson, have you had a little bit of time to reflect on that and, and what you're going to bring into today's match? Yeah, look, I think it's really important that we celebrate our successes. But we also know that we've only just kept this, the series alive. And today's a really important game to make sure that the series goes to game five. So it's just about keep doing that those things that we did well in Nelson for longer periods of time because we know obviously there's a few changes in the England side and we're going to have to I guess step up again to make sure that we can match it today. You mentioned those changes, how much does that get spoken about as a group? Oh look I think it's really important that you identify some of the players that are coming into their group, obviously world class players with the likes of Nats, Siva Brunt and Sophie Eccleston so we've obviously spoken briefly about them, um, I think we, we know our plans and again if we execute we can hopefully mitigate their, their impact on the game. And team changes today? Yeah Hannah Rowe comes in for Leah Wonderful, thanks Soph. Best of luck. Heather, I'll bring you in now. Another toss loss, unfortunately. What would you have done first if you'd won? Uh, I would have done the same. So, um, yeah, not going too great on the toss front. But, um, yeah, don't mind it too much. It, it's obviously quite a big ground and a little bit of wind involved, so it could be quite hard to chase. But, um, yeah, we've, we've done both things. And, um, obviously, we've batted well when we have um, had the opportunity to do that. So, hopefully, we go the same again. And Nelson probably didn't end up as you would have liked. How do you go about talking about that as a team? Is it something you spend a lot of time talking about? Or is it park the bus and move on? No, we were really honest. I, I think it's important... Um, um, obviously didn't go how we wanted to and I think it was a really good learning opportunity for us. We obviously got some inexperience um, in that middle order so um, situations like that you learn so much from I think and, and just being really honest with, with how you react in that situation and then take your learnings and, and park it. And yeah, we know you've got a few players who've arrived as reinforcements. Have you got some team changes today? Uh, yeah, we've got four. So the WPL girls come back in. Uh, missing out will be uh, Beaumont, Heath and uh, Glenn has concussion. So she'll sit out. Wonderful. Thanks for your time today. Here they go. Well, well that is it. It is that, news from the middle. Thank you very much, Frankie Mackay. Uh, that's audio courtesy of TVNZ. So New Zealand has won the toss and decided to have a bowl first as the sun now uh, dominating uh, things here at the Basin Reserve. So uh, ominous uh, clouds being pushed away, which is uh, nice. Very, very strong northerly uh, whipping through uh, Wellington. Uh, gale force at times. What a great day for my brother to jump on the ferry and head south. Oh. Hope he's enjoying it out in the middle. Good no, luck. Yeah, good luck. Uh, no surprise as far as toss? No, I I think it's the safe way to go about it yeah. if you're a bit unsure, but in particular after doing well to finish that game you know, you would like to think that the White Ferns have a little bit of confidence and even a touch of momentum coming yeah. out of that win in Nelson and it's an opportunity to put England under pressure straight away. Uh, and if they can pick up a couple of wickets and expose that middle order, of which there are some changes, it should be noted. Um, you know, who knows? They might be able to unearth a little bit of that uh, that stress and anxiety again in the English lineup. New Zealand has won the toss for game number four and will bowl first. Uh, New Zealand's side, Susie Bates, Bernadine Bazard and Hope Millie Kerr, Sophie Devine, Maddie Green, Brooke Halliday, Izzy Gaze, Hannah Rowe, into the sides with Leah Tahuhu, sorry, uh, Jess Kerr back into the side with Leah Tahuhu uh, missing out. Hannah Rowe retains her spot from uh, the last game. Uh, Rosemary Mayer and Fran Jonas make up the remainder of the side, so relatively unchanged, especially in direct comparison to the visitors of England. Out go Beaumont, Glenn, Dean and Heath. Four really, really good players, of course. I know Tammy Beaumont's 
you know, been more of a fixture of the one-day lineup and had to wait some 26 months, I think, for her recall to the T20 setup, going past 100 matches. Glenn's out with that concussion, the number four ranked bowler in the world. Uh, Dean's been uh, pretty impressive uh, bowling her off breaks uh, throughout the series, and Heath probably hasn't featured as much as she would like. But in come the likes of Danny Wyatt. Alice Capsey, Nat Siverbrunt, Soki, Sophie Eccleston, who of course is the number one ranked T20 bowler in the world. The full side, Danny White, Maya Boucher, who played oh so well, batting at number three in game number three, uh, will push up and uh, open the innings. Uh, Sophia Dunkley is going to slide down the order. So quite a change at the top. Alice, Alice Capsey uh, retains her spot at uh, first drop as she's predominantly uh, played in her young career, just 19 years of age. That's of a brunt, really. Just one of the best cricketers going around on the women's circuit. Her power in that middle order, uh, much uh, welcomed, I'm sure. Her all-round uh, abilities too. Heather Knight's going to drop into the number five position. Amy Jones will keep him bat at six. Sophia Dunkley, as mentioned, will uh, line up in the middle order, batting at seven. Then Danielle Gibson, uh, Sophie Eccleston, um, Lauren Bell and Charlie Dean. Excuse me, I, 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 I dropped Charlie Dean from the side. Uh, she's playing, of course, uh, you know, egg on my face. Uh, really, really strong, Jacob Borum. Wow, that, that's quite a difference. Yeah, drop Sarah Glenn, well not drop, she's injured, well concussion, <coughs> Sarah Glenn misses out and uh, you just bring in Sophie Eccleston as her replacement, which is not a bad place to be in and someone like Tammy Beaumont, who was at the top of the order, is not on the side now, but you bring in, I think, the best player in the world, um, well, probably someone like Beth Mooney or someone like that would have an argument with that as well, but... And that's Siver Brunt. So very strong side and a lot of depth. And I know it's something that has been talked about for a long time in the New Zealand women's game and the White Ferns, the depth. And along with probably Australia, England is the gold medal standard for that depth. And they can they can pull people in and leave them out and send them off to the A's who are Nelson. And it's almost like this conveyor belt of talent coming back and forth. So along with Alice Capsey and Danny White, who's extremely experienced. I mean, that is four players you would love to bring in at your disposal. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Charlie Dean, of course, is playing. It was Lindsay Smith who mm. has uh, been left out, uh, the left arm uh, finger spitter. So uh, Eccleston comes and fills that role and probably will do a very uh, a better job. But uh, my Boucher, gee, that was an impressive knock um, in Nelson on Sunday. A player who's probably still yet to completely prove herself and cement herself, but you can see why they're giving her a run here. She's great in the field, a really good outfielder. Mm. It just makes it look so easy with the bat, that is. Exactly, and then coming back to that depth conversation again, it's like you're not going to get your chance with a side like England if you don't have some talent on disposal, uh, or at your disposal, I, I should say. And I've, I've seen Boucher a few times now with different tours and A-sides and even in Queenstown a couple of weeks ago with the New Zealand A-team and we had a warm-up game against this full English side. And she got, I think she got a duck or one or two, something like that. Um, and even I was kind of like, really? What? You know, her at the top of the order? And then you see that in Nelson and you're like, oh, OK, I can see that now. <laughs> Shots all around the ground, front foot, back foot, against someone even like Rose Romare who's bowling so well at the moment this whole season, really. There's one shot in particular where she just hit Rosemary back over her head, a couple of bounces for four, and you just thought, yeah, you've okay. got talent, you know. Rosemary Mayer has been a great story of the summer. I thought that first over, uh, she conceded one run. Tammy Beaumont didn't look like she was having fun at all, was late on a defensive stroke, and then got hit in the throat. Mm. Uh, she seems to have found just a great rhythm. Yeah, she's bowled well now since, well, the whole summer, like I said before. I mean... I came into the Heinz role around about September, so not far away from the start of the season. So really, I can't take any credit because all the hard work had been done by her through the winter uh, and earlier in that pre-season. I think with her, you know, she'd been out of this White Ferns team for a good couple of years because of injuries, potentially her own form as well, others getting an opportunity. And I think what happened, and I'm, I'm guessing here, I haven't really spoken to Rosemary about this, but, you know, it's almost like she'd parked the idea of selection off to the side and it was just about focusing on number one playing cricket and not and trying to keep your body in a good in good shape to play but then number two actually just performing well for herself and for the hinds and whatever happened from there took care of itself and my word she's been the pick of the seamers in new zealand definitely the fastest bowler going round. i mean a number of times this season for the hinds you could see there was a little bit of fear at the other end with the batters so oh, she well, you're hurrying tammy beaumont up well exactly yeah that, that, that's all i need to know yeah and you know sometimes 
well, not sometimes. Pace is fine, but if you don't know where it's going, good players will still hit it. Hit it. And, you know, I think we've, what we've seen with Rosemary is not only that pace mm. and that ability to stay on the field, but her radar's on song as well at the moment as well. When you put that together with a little bit of movement and bounce, it can be a real handful. So I hope today we see her with that northerly behind her. <laughs> and let's see how we go. Uh, the, the fast bowling stock seems, you know, with the depth issue. That, that's one area where you've probably got satisfactory depth. It's, I guess, about striking a balance of your side, you know, with, with the middle order down on runs, mm. especially if we're going to a World Cup in Bangladesh, do you bring in another spinner? So, and you can sort of part those conversations for um, down the line. But the here and the now, what do they need to do better with the ball? Uh, um, we, we've seen... Say, let's take Nelson. Brilliant for 14 overs, mm. very loose late on. Yeah. Game number three, it was loose early on and brilliant when the pressure really was on them, bizarrely. Yeah. See, I look at T20 cricket and I think it's a batter's game and batters win you the games. So I know you just asked me about the bowlers, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think if the White Ferns can score more, this is going to be like Cricket 101. <laughs> for everyone listening, they'll just be like, thanks for the analysis, well, expert. The, the cliches but for if, a reason. Though. If you score more runs, you will win the game. Yeah. And so, for me, the White Ferns don't score enough runs. Too that, reliant on three players. Oh, massively. And But but I've seen the best out of Matty Green and Brooke Halliday and all these other players in the middle order. I've seen that. You know, I don't I don't look at warts and all stuff because I've seen them at their best. I know it's there. But the likes of those players, Bernadine at the top of the order, have got to supplement what Sophie, Susie and Amelia bring to the table. But to answer your questions, it's just about consistency for as long as you can with that accuracy. A bit of variations and you just try and restrict with the ball. And again, you hope that you score more runs through the quality of your bats. That's womanship. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and and Bazaar at home made a really positive uh, imprint on that game. Really busy. I, I think I described in commentary, almost busy to a fault. Mm, yeah. But did, did throw England off. Yeah, yeah. like she scores in typical keepers, really. <laughs> in weird areas, she'll sweep, she'll reverse lap, she'll... You know, really busy. Like, her feet never... Like, I don't think there's a constant pre-delivery movement with her. You know, it's not back and across and wait for the ball. It's kind of like always trying to be proactive and put the, the bowlers off, which is great. It's just sometimes I think there is a need for um, a foundation, a technical foundation. Um, and sometimes those busy players, those players who like to put the bowler off, can forget that they're starting on zero as well and sometimes you have to get the pitch and the, the conditions and all that sort of stuff before you can get a bit funky. Uh, Jacob Oram is alongside me, Daniel McCarty, in commentary uh, for today's game. Of course, our CD coach now, but was was with the White Ferns uh, from 2018 through to 2022. Knows uh, both these group of players very well. Can't wait for his insights as our commentary uh, continues. Dylan winning the toss and deciding to have a bowl first and Looks like Rosemary Mayer will be bowling up into the breeze. Jacob Warham. Not happy. What? I, Not, why? I think... Why? How, explain that to me. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. I, that probably means where Hannah Rose fielding at deep backward square means she might bowl or, or Jess Kerr maybe anyway about Rosemary maybe they they think well you're bowling well enough fast enough even into the wind you're still going to be a handful but for me that's just putting a handbrake on someone who is at the peak of her powers at the moment absolutely and it is quite a breeze um, even by Wellington standards gusts consistently upwards of 70 75k at the moment when it's quieter still 20 to 40k so it's a, a bolchy one for sure Let's uh, see if this plan does work. It will be Maya Boucher on strike. At the other end, Danny Wyatt, one of the four changes to the English side, and she's an absolute dynamo. At the top is Danny Wyatt. Her ability to score quickly, right-handed player. How heavily right-handed throughout their order. That's uh, probably the only thing I think they would change if they could is turn one of them into a left-hander. But here we go. In bright sunshine now, Mare first. Ball goes Oi. past the outside edge. Good bounce, good pace into that breeze as Boucher's looking to open the blade and run it down towards third man. So a slip, third man. Backward point. Cover, extra cover, mid-off. Mid-on, mid-wicket. Lonely figure of Hannah Rowe, a deep backward square. Yeah, it bounced immediately as well. That carried through nicely. It is obviously a brand new ball. And maybe that's the thinking as well. They're thinking, well, Rosemary is a bounce bowler. She's a seam bowler. 
Doesn't really rely on the the wind for any sort of swing. Moves past umpire Brown, bowls again around about ribcage height. It's flicked away off the top of the bat, down to Woods Road, deep backward square England on the board with a single one without loss. Two balls bowled. Our coverage is with Razine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. Not a fun day to catch if a ball goes up. No. Jacob, I was watching here the night doing warm-ups. We know what a fine player she is. She was having a right old nightmare, a right old fight with the Wellington Breeze. Well, to be fair, a lot of the English were, all the English were, the New Zealanders are probably well used to it, but I notice all were getting their extras done with some high catches and some of them weren't even getting hands laid on it as it blew away from their positions. Third man up inside the circle now. Deep backward point goes back as Daddy Wyatt's first ball of the series will see her beaten outside of off stump. Sort of a tentative little cut stroke, not really thrashing at it, the right-hander, and through to Gaze. And that's that bounce again. We've said it already. I mean, that's a roundabout, if you can picture, fifth stump, so a couple of stumps wide of off stump, which is not width, but it's going through roundabout chest height. And Wyatt just trying to get on the bounce of it. Wyatt's well known for being more of a front foot player. Can play the pool, but prefers to just get forward and swing through a length ball. And I think that's why maybe with it being slashed away, that's why that backward point's back on the boundary. Bizarre sort of cocked grip as the bat sort of points away to leg slip as she waits and uh, gets the ball into her thigh pad. It's going to trickle out into the onside. Just back with a square gaze, sprints around from behind the wicket, but a leg by, signal by umpire Brown. Two without loss. Four balls into today's game. Not about, but the sun is out most importantly. It's going to every... It's nice at the moment. An hour ago, or 90 minutes ago, it was quite threatening, so very good to see that sun come out and shadows across the Basin Reserve. Boucher back on strike. She gets width and has oh. edged one between slip and keeper. Both half went, both stopped and gazed and divine at first slip. And a genuine chance goes begging. First boundary six without loss. And those are the chances that the White Ferns need. They are playing against a very good side in England. And it must be said that's not a great delivery. Probably a wide or nearly a wide if she hadn't nicked it. But I did think to myself, Daniel, beforehand, I don't know if I've seen Sophie Devine in the slips very much at all. And for me, as he gaze is down on a bit of confidence at the moment. I think you've seen that there with just an inexperienced Corden. Rosemary Mare bails out as she can't get a run-up rhythmical into this breeze. That's a keeper's catch. Uh, especially going to your right as a right-handed player, person, yeah, I th but what I was saying, you know, for those who have watched the series up till now, they have been more so standing up to the stumps against the slow bowlers, yep. some some stumping, some errors, or just balls being left or played and missed with some hard hands, so big day for Izzy Gaze. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair comment, from over the wicket mere bowls, again, good bounce oh, around no, from Kate Hyde, it's punched off the back foot into the cover region, and there will be no runs, so an eventful first over, six runs off at New Zealand, spinning a chance, high into the right of Gaze, but sort of perfectly in between keeper and first slip, the inside shoulder of uh, Sophie Devine at first slip, both sort of half, both flinched, and then both bailed out as we checked on the uh, G.J. Gardner Holmes replay. So six without loss. Boucher is on five. Wyatt yet to get off the mark. And it will be Jess Kerr. It will no doubt be used to these conditions. Thank you, Wellington. You would hope so. <laughs> you would hope so. So she'll be bowling down breeze. Gaze standing up to the stumps. Helmet on. Jacob is right. She did miss a couple of tough slip, stumping chances, which she can forgive. Couple that really didn't need to be taken. She did take the one that really, really did matter. The I, last ball of the game. I just would have loved, even if it was one over, the first over, to see Rosemary Mare with her tail up, the yep. wind behind her, running in with some real pace and bounce. Here's, and then Kerr yeah. could come in for the third over. From the van stand end, bowls full and drifts it back into the right-hander. On the front foot is Wyatt pushing straight back to Kerr. No run. This, I mean, the way they've, they've played it here as well, the White Ferns, it means the 20th over, the, you know, the big death over when they no doubt will be swinging for the fences, England, is into the wind. So the hitters will be heading to long on, long off, cow corner, into that wind. So hopefully it'll hold the ball up. Kerr gives width outside of off stump, trying to play a square drive and missing. 
as it bounces over the top of the bat, and that's been the, the big feature. And also fumbled as well, and I watched as he K's, and I'm not trying to pick on her, but it probably seems like I am, but I watched her at warm-ups in particular, and she was doing a lot of work standing up, just with drill work with some of the coaches and shadow batters, but then when the bowlers are warming up as well. So, as I said before, big day for her, and she's aware of those improvements. Opening the face, rolling it to short third man, sloppy fielding. That's uh, just gone straight between the gate. Fran Jonas really has got to gobble that up. That's an easy single conceded. Seven without loss. I know some fast bowlers in the first over would read the right act oh. there. And that's, yeah, that again, like that catch that went through slip and keeper. Those are just the, I mean, that's not a dismissal like in the first over from Rosemary Mere, but those sort of mistakes just need to be squashed fairly quickly from the White Ferns. Fairly needless. Number 24 on the back of Kerr. She bowls again, full of this time on, off stump, push tentatively into the offside. There's no run. It's a good start by Jess Kerr. I mean, it's not an easy task to be able to swing the ball that that much and to be able to have accuracy with it. We see a couple of others in swingers around the country with Claudia Green and Emma Black who... Are very similar, but probably not quite as accurate. Yeah. With, to be able to control as much swing is a good skill. She's in again, moves past umpire Black, and it's uh, driven nicely into the cover region, but that's uh, Bates quickly around to her right-hand side, preventing any run being taken, but there's a lovely crisp sound of the bat of Boucher. It was a nice shot. Hit well, just bounced up nicely for Bates as she slid on her right side. Scarred playing surface here with about eight or nine blocks. Look well used into the pads of Boucher. Neatly tucked through the square leg region for a single. Pretty decent start though by Kerr. Two runs off the second over, including a misfield. So England sent in a eight without loss, two overs in. That's the sound of home. A house built with expert care and attention by Generation Homes isn't just a house, it's a home. A place that sets the stage for the rhythm of your life, whatever that may be, with agreed time frames and fixed prices. Building with Generation Homes is easier than you might think. Visit generation.co.nz to start today. Generation Homes, making building easy. Our coverage is with Rosine, the paint professionals use live from the Basin Reserve for game number four of the five-match T20 series between New Zealand and uh, England. England are eight without loss after two. Bush is on six, white one, and Hannah Rowe into the attack. She's to start signalling to... And she's replaced Rosemary Mia to just go a little bit finer. And Ord's long leg. Slips still in place as uh, Boucher is not happy. She's got uh, a gust of breeze that's kicked up some dirt and into the eye. Oh, she doesn't like it. Left eye. This is a big spell for, for Hannah Rowe. Because unlike Rosemary Mere, who sort of bustles in with a bit of strength and hits the deck hard, Hannah Rowe does rely on rhythm and being able to get into a nice stable position, wrist position to swing the ball a little fuller than... Mere does. She starts, gets nice and close to the stumps first ball and advancing Boucher meets her, flicks it down towards deep backward square. Just for a single nine without loss, Boucher seven off eight. If anything, what does can move the ball slightly mm. away from the right hand is that best? She should do. I'm I'm not actually when we went down early before it, it wasn't this blustery. I can't quite recall what kind of angle we were... I don't know if you can recall if it's... Sort of a nor'wester, if anything. So if it, it, she sort of pushing so pretty it's much... fighting against her swing, almost. Yeah, it is. It, although... And the captain's come out. It's probably... If you can draw a line between where uh, Danny Wyatt is and maybe mid-off, that's probably the, oh, yeah. the angle of the breeze. So it might just help the away swinger. It's not going to help that one because that's a short, long hot. That's plundered through mid-wicket. Can't bowl there to Wyatt. She likes it short at that pace. And she has smoked it through to the mid-wicket fence for four. Well, Danny Wyatt's a middle-order player turned in, this is years ago, turned into an opening batter, but a dynamic one and plays her shots. She's about strike rate. She's not there to bat 20 overs, so what she faced now, half a dozen balls. Yeah, it is six balls. And now it feels like she's in well enough. That's short, nothing behind it into this wind. 
and onto it very quickly. Well, the thing about her career record that sticks out, 127 strike rate, and she gets a slab or wider of off stump, but she drags it through square leg. Long chase from Mel. Get there just in time. Keeps it in the field of play. Yeah. Awkward landing for her. I hope mm. she's okay. I hope the left knee's all right. They'll uh, saunter back for a third. So Wyatt moves quickly on to eight, and it's 16 without loss. This was my concern. That was almost shorter and slower, really, by Hannah Rowe, and I just wonder about her rhythm into the wicket. And you're right, Daniel, about that landing. There it is there, just heavy landing on that, that left knee and left thigh, oh, sorry, right thigh. Sort of rolled, did very well, though, Rosemary Mare. Saved one, just the three. But already a fielding change because of that, and I think that wind is very, very strong, and Rowe probably struggling with her. That rhythm and that timing, and Maddie Green's not gone out to deep square. Long leg deep square, the two out inside the circle. No slip now. Short third man, backward point cover, extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket. Also inside the circle. Into this breeze, uh, row, bowls, uh, a very short ball that sh could be called wide. No, it's just snuck in under the uh, legal height. But to see the GJ Gardner Holmes replay on that one. Looked like another off speed short pitch delivery. Seems to have gone to those a lot this series. Is that something she's comfortable with? Well, you know what? I think sometimes the perception is off speed, but she just loses the timing right. of it. You know, when feet hit the ground and arms coming over and actually her release point. And drags it, it gives too that short. A, it gives right. that impression, yeah. And again, bowls fuller, beating the outside edge of the right-hander, who's now playing a classical cover drive practice shot. Problem was she tried to swat it towards mid-on and miss by quite some distance. I sort of feel like this field set or this this end isn't, you know, Hannah Rowe is a, a pitch the ball. I know she's tall, but she's a pitch the ball up and swing it, trying to nick people off because she does get good swing. And right from ball one, Sophie Devine removed herself from slip to mid off and kind of takes away Hannah Rowe's strength. Rowe bowls and Busher hits high over long on on the back of the breeze. That might go all the way and does so. Hit towards the bottom of the bat. A loud ping. You may have picked up on her effects, Mike. Quite a way to end the over. It's 22 without loss. 14 runs coming off the third. PGG Rights and Turf has been breeding turf grass seeds suitable for New Zealand race courses for over 40 years. They focus on the delivery of high-performance turf grass solutions. From seed and turf maintenance products to nutrition plans and agronomic advice, their driven team is equipped with the technical knowledge and market-leading products to help you achieve the best possible solution. To find out more about how they can help with your racecourse turf grass requirements, visit pggrightsandturf.com. Well, what a stroke from Boucher, Maya Boucher, to end the third over, taking England to 22 without loss. Our coverage with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. Danny White on strike. England's leading run scorer now in uh, T20 internationals. She's defending, dropping the ball into the offside. Quick single, great response from Boucher. Gee, she's quick. Whether it's in the outfield or running between the wickets, excellent cricket, 23 without loss. And that's why England is so good previous ball, the last ball of Hannah Rose over, which was an amazing shot. I, I wondered if <laughs> Midon had a chance to catch at it. first to catch it. I'm sort of looking at the fielder and the trajectory of the ball. Next thing is, it's on the embankment. Unbelievable shot. And the next ball's a drop and run for one. Good cricket. Curran again. Back of a length. Pulled away nicely through mid-wicket. Long chase for deep square leg. Might not cut it off. Will not. Four runs flowing inside the power play for England. Boucher, 17 off 12. It's 27 without loss. It's a great shot because that's not that short. We saw a couple of pull shots in the last over by Hannah Rowe that were short and needed to be hit. That's probably just about bail height. What it tells me, Daniel, is it's a good pitch. If you can hit a ball over mid-on when it's a good length and then not far off that similar length, be able to pull it away through mid-wicket in front of square, it's a good wicket. Jess Kerr under a little bit of pressure now. Her response will be what? She bowls fuller this time and it's smoked back past the bowler and past... Danny White. It may have actually flicked the rump of the non-striker. I'd like to see a replay of this because the ball's actually trickled towards long on. Hannah Rowe flicks back to Sophie Devine and they'll come back for two and Boshier might have to go down and apologise to Wyatt. It's 29 without loss. Bring up the GJ Gardner Holmes replay, please. Gee, she smoked that, though. Maybe just hitting the ball into the wind. Does that happen on the ground? Let's throw it out there. It did, you're right though, it did slow up. I thought it was four off the bat easy. Kerr, and again, uh, wider of off stump and a push into the cover region, no run. 
smart inside the circle. New Zealand all hunting there. Boucher sort of apologises to White because she set off. Boucher, 43 off 40. Then 12 off 20 in game number two. This is scores the series. Then 71 off 47. And when she went out, it was such a winning position. I hope, I hope her teammates bought a dinner after that. She waits the right hand at the elegant play. It's a, a low full toss. She drives into the cover region. There'll be no run. That's better from Kerr after going for an early boundary. So far, seven runs off the five balls of this over. And what she's done here, Kerr, is it's still a full length. So it's still, still swinging, but she's able to have that constant line, which is straight. And it's not allowing Beauchere to have that freedom of her arms to go to any width. So even though it's a four and a two off the first couple of balls... And a single. She's managed to keep it quiet after that. Good finish here for Kerr. Full and driven up towards mid-off. The end of the over. Four overs in England batting first. 29 without loss. Ah, that gloomy second bedroom. All it needs is, is brightening up. So how do you get started? Do you need to seal the walls before you paint? Are you putting off your painting project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask the team at your local Resine Colour Shop for all the help you need on the best paints, prep and painting techniques for your project so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with Resine. Good night without loss, England. After four overs at the Basin Reserve, our coverage with Rosine, the paint professionals use. Jess Kerr's bowled two overs from the Vance stand end. Now we're going to see another bowling change. It's time from the Adelaide Road end, or Government House end, whichever you want to call it. And it'll be Rosemary Mayer who bowled the first over, conceded just six runs. Well, six in the over. There was one league by, so five against her name. She's replaced Hannah Rowe. No slip for her. Third man in long or deep backward square. Here's an edge behind taken, looking to play a cut stroke. It bounced on her. Danny White's not the tallest, but she found enough timber. And a wicket for Mayor and New Zealand. White goes for nine. It's 29 for one. Well, we saw a couple of these playing misses in the first over from Rosemary Mayer. That one almost was there to hit, but I think the beauty of it for Rosemary Mayer was that there's that bounce. And we've seen a little bit of that already, a number of pull shots, but also some play and misses off the back foot. And thankfully this time for the White Ferns, all White could do was just nick it through to Izzy Gaze, who completes the task, and White's gone for nine. Are oh, you thrilled to see the back of Danny White with nine again, nine from nine? Gets two names, some players I talked about, the strike rate. Close to 130 career strike rate, which really does give impetus at the top. And she also has that ability to go on, a couple mm. of T20 hundreds as well. Danny White, a known commodity, but a hugely talented player, just 19 years of age. Alice Capsey comes out at number three. We can get White out and it just exposes the WPL players coming in now. White, one of them herself. Now Capsey, then Sibber Brunt, then Captain Heather Knight, who wasn't at the WPL, but we know how good she is. So, very strong batting lineup, very deep batting lineup here for England today. How would you describe the right hand of Capsey as a player? Hugely talented. Yeah, good. Like most of them, you know, to get to this level with this England side, to be able to fight your way into the top side. A lot of power, happy to play his shots, good strike rate. You know, it's what you want in a T20 player. The right-hander will uh, have a slip behind her to counter. Fine leg's now up inside the circle. Deep backward square as uh, Mia uh, gets another reach. It goes straight to ground. Is trying to play a nice little deaf late cut. Didn't bounce as much. It was a fuller length, that's why. But full stroke nonetheless. 29 for one, it remains. Yeah, well, again, another edge. We've just seen the replay there. It was a little bit of width. But the bounce just helping out Rosemary Mayer and the White Ferns. But maybe with these... These players come from India. They're not used to the ball bouncing above probably about waist height. And Rose Ramir just one step ahead at the moment. Capsy, the right hand of bat raised nice and high. Mir gives her width. She's beaten outside of off stump again. Shorter this time. A little bit of width. It's there to play, but it's that pace and bounce that she has. Capsy just not capitalising. It's also a player I think's under can be under the spotlight. 19 years of age, made a debut at 17. You know, hugely talented, but you've got to produce. And in her last 12 T20 innings, Jacob, she's only got over 10 three times. Mm. That's, that's quite a string of low scores and just one beyond 50 against uh, Sri Lanka uh, August of last year. 
Chapman. She shows what she's capable of. 51 off 39 that day. Pushed into the point region. No run. Excellent over this from Rosemary Mayer. Bowling 114k into the northerly. Mm. That's what I was thinking before. Well, firstly on Capsi, obviously someone they've identified to invest in for the future. And when you get that tag, you get a little bit of a longer leash. Um, but yeah, you're right. I noticed that before. Mayer's up around that 114, 115, which into the wind... And women's cricket is exceptional, really. You know, if you flip her around down when you're probably talking about in the 120s, which is getting up there. I call it the basin tax. You know, she's been taxed a few. Full of this time, pushed straight back to the bowler, who's very respectful as Capsie. And this is turning into a wonderful opening spell from here. Again, 117.7k. Wicket first ball, then four dots to the new player. And England, who are on uh, the cusp of having their best power play in the series. Now I've only got seven balls, legal balls remaining, and it's remained at 29 for the loss of one. And that's something New Zealand has done well throughout the series, is limit the damage with the field up and the, the opening six overs. Last ball of the fifth, Mayer goes shorter this time, climbing, but nicely guided backward a point with a cut stroke. Long chase for Pizzano and to get some throws and returns. McCapsey off the mark with a couple after five overs. 31 for the loss of one. New Zealand picking up the wicket. Rosemary Mayer's figures now one for seven off two. Hmm. If I fall off that wobbly old ladder while I'm painting the house, who'll take the dog for walkies? Have a hmm and ask yourself, if you get hurt, who gets harmed? Find out more at acc.co.nz. Busy making a crease in the sofa as you watch batsmen at the crease? Well, you won't want to risk leaving the couch because you might miss this ball, the next ball, or the delivery after that. Best get your dinner delivered instead. Maccas, we deliver. SNZ live from the Basin Reserve, game number four, New Zealand v England. Our coverage is with Rosine, the paint professionals use. Daniel McCarty alongside Jacob Oram. And we're going to see Fran Jonas into the attack. One over remaining in the power play. She'll be bowling left arm around the wicket with her finger spin. In the back of the breeze too. She'll look to spear it in. Or she starts a little bit flighter. Driven dust to the right of the bowler. Dives across. Palms the ball into Capsi. There's almost a collision between the two youngsters. And a good start here from Fran Jonas who really now looks at home in international cricket. She's bowled well this series. We'll slide it on with that angle. Wide of off stump, leaning forward, flicking through mid on. Who's pushed back? Maddie Green on the boundary. Comfortable single for Boucher's 19. Sorry, 20. It's 32 for one. And that's almost the play there with deep mid wicket and long on back, although it changes now. Mid on comes up and deep square comes back for Capsi. But Fran Jonas won't be trying to spin it pretty much. She'll just be going from her left arm wide of the crease, release point and trying to spear the ball back into the stumps. So there are singles there for the English if they want them. There's one that tails back in towards the right hander from wide of the air, wide of the crease as the left armour does release. It's just an angle, isn't it? It's hard to beat this heavily packed offside field. Deep backward square, deep mid wicket out on the onside. Here's a sweet top edge out towards the two aforementioned players, but it lands and pitches. Lovely little sandwich, spins backwards. The throw comes in. There's an almighty sound as Gaze destroys the stumps, but Capsie's uh, well past. And a couple to the English. We'll uh, see the score go to 34 for the loss of one. Capsie moves to four. Good bit of homework by the White Ferns. That field change for Capsie's sweep shot. Obviously, a big player of that shot. I'm surprised, actually. I saw that go up and Amelia Kerr got that run out in Nelson off here the night, which was a game changer in itself. And when I saw them turn for that too, I thought, well, here we go here again. We go. But go. better judges of runs than me this far away at 45 years old, I suppose. Yeah, long run in from that deep mid-wicket boundary. Here's a, a sweep that's going to balloon off the glove to short fine leg, landing well in front. No run, Jess Kerr in quickly. 34 for the loss of one. One ball remaining inside the power play. He runs off the Jonas over. She's in again, past the umpire. Getting the inside edge of Caps, who's trying to open the face, push into the offside. They could have easily been dragged back onto the stumps. Good over from Jonas. New Zealand have done a good job. It's under six runs and over after six. England 35 for one. Get so much more with a great garage store from Garage Auckland. Ten years warranty, real security, Garrett Top, 
Our coverage with Rosine Quality Paint and Colours for your summer projects. Jacob Borum, how do you judge that power play from a New Zealand perspective? Oh, a tale of two halves for me, Daniel. Like, I just did a bit of maths then. <laughs> the last 15 balls only went for six runs with one wicket. So I think that's an outstanding finish. England had the momentum first. The White Ferns finished with it. New over. Drive attempt. Slicing off the bat. Uppishly to backward point. No run. You thought for a while there, Wyatt and... Boucher we're going to get away and get something scary like 45 50 maybe plus off that power play but extremely well bowled that second over from Rosary Mare started it and Fran Jonas finished it there and a good finish in the end to that power play for the White Ferns. Capsey who's battling a bit like is uh, Sophie Devine who I should have mentioned has come into the attack from the government house end her first ball was a dot ball it's not her with a big gust of breeze but Capsey is I say fighting a little bit here. Five off ten. Don't want to give any freebies. Divine bowls very nicely. Tight line pushed into the offside. Good judge of a run though. The English pair just dropped and over hit. And they steal a run. 36 for one. If she can keep that length, I like this field. It's 5-4 offside field. You've got deep cover point back. And a short on the leg side. Everyone else on the offside in the ring, but on the leg side, a, a 45 Rosary Mare, and then the three on the boundary. If you picture kind of like an off spinner's field, mm. and I like that into the wind for Sophie Devine. She gets nice and close to the stumps, but uh, drags her length down and line his leg stump and going underneath and then up and over. Short fine leg down to the unprotected rope for four. Boucher, the margins of error are not particularly high and she's uh, made New Zealand pay. She moves to 24, it's 40 for one. It's a bit too straight. That length is okay, it's it's just into the wicket. But the problem is it's at Boucher's thigh pad and she's able to just help it over Rosary Mare at short fine leg. Fine and again, bowls. Boucher's advancing, meets the ball at the top of the bounce as she works it through mid-wicket for just a single. I thought the New Zealand ground fielding at times was excellent for Nelson. Mm. There's some good athletes out there for sure, and Amelia Kerr there, and that that's, feels like a big boundary out there towards where she is at sort of a straight mid-wicket cow corner, but, yeah, some good fields. Amelia Kerr leads the way there, doesn't she? Susie Bates, even at her veteran status, throws herself around, so it's not a bad fielding side. Nice-looking cut stroke just in front of square by Capsi. Just a single, though. She's seven. It's 42 for the loss of one. Kerr patrol in the deep mid-wicket boundary out in front of the Wakefield Memorial from the bank. That's, that angles the 64 metres on either side. They're the longest part of the ground, but predominantly 60 to 64 if you want to take a measurement right around the 360 degrees is divine. It's into the hip of the right-hander, Boucher works it through square leg out to Hannah Rowe. The end of the over. Eight runs off it. It's 43 for one after seven England batting first. Hi, Paul from Waterforce. As a customer, you want it all. The backing of a national operation with a local operator that knows your water needs. That's why thousands of Kiwis just like John Richmond have chosen Waterforce as their water management partner. So I would recommend Waterforce for anyone else. They're just pros at what they're doing. They made it pretty seamless and easy. Really good to work with and um, happy to compromise and change things to, to suit our system. Visit waterforce.co.nz today to find out more. Live cricket with Rosine Quality Paints and Colours for your summer projects. And uh, the Eagle Eye Jacob Warren spotted something in the uh, little ad break. Yeah, I can pick an injury. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Years of experience of hobbling around. But, I just, well, I just noticed Sophie called for something. Lee Casper, a 12th man, came running on and didn't actually want anything. Wanted Lee to stay on and swapped. So, bibs. And Sophie came running off with the high-vis bib and then called straight for the physio. Let's hope it's nothing too serious. Like, I don't know if she's got something strapped and needs it re-strapped. Not sure. But she was kind of jogging off, but let's see and let's hope that she's not too bad and can come back out because her overs are crucial, but obviously with the bat as well. So calling the physio to, to follow her into the changing sheds. Right. It's not a great sign. Not a let's great be honest. Sign. It's not going to be a positive thing. So it will be 
Millie Kerr under the attack. The left arm, sorry, right arm leg Ooh. spinner. Starts with a ball on off stump and it's crunched through mid off. That is just a glorious stroke from Boucher. Slightly over pitch, but she's hit it so sweetly. Just to the left of uh, mid off. Racing out of the fence, 47 for one, and Boucher playing a lone hand at the moment, 30 off 22. Yeah, I apologise to people listening about my random ooh and ooh, that, was, that was worthy of an ooh, though. Better length here from Kerr, wider of off stump, going back, playing through point for one. Again, the ball just sips off that back uh, to the field on the deep, just a single. Sometimes you see a shot, and it's a nice shot to start with, but then when you see the timing and the power of it, and Boucher's got it at the moment. And you thought, Jess Kerr has got a chance to her left, but no chance. She just turned to follow it. So, lovely first ball there for Boucher. Kurt, first wrong and of the spell, spinning back into the right-handed cap. She takes her hand off the bat. She's somewhat surprised, judging maybe the amount of spin off the wicket. A single, though, through square leg. It's 49 for one. Well, like I said about facing Rosemary Mayer and the bounce coming from India and not experiencing that bounce, you would think that the likes of Capsi and Silverbrun still to come will be fairly comfortable against spin. Here's a stumping chance that goes begging. It's gone under the bat of an advancing Boucher and not club cleaning from gaze. Yeah, we mentioned it well, right at the start, didn't we? First or second over. Just those opportunities, those... Those mistakes off wicket-taking opportunities need to be taken. You don't want to give chances to these batters. You need to take them when they come. Kirk goes leg side, and it's uh, pulled very fine past short fine leg. That will run away towards the boundary. It's going to get there just in front of Jonas. So that's the old insult into injury now, isn't it? A four will take England past 50, and it's 53 for the loss of one. So they let one big let one go between Gaze and Divine in the quarter and in the first over and now stumping which she does lose sight of it because it does go under the bat but to the offside so important pulled away nicely from the bat of Boucher out towards deep mid wicket for a single 54 for one Boucher to 36 that is the end of the Kerr over 11 runs off it and England 54 for one through eight is your business on a busy road? Maximise your location and elevate your presence with a vast digital billboard. And not just any old billboard, an LED billboard. Showcase your brand and products up in lights, bold and bright, 24-7 with Vast. Sizing to suit from 2 metres to 10 metres. Be seen and increase sales. Contact Vast Billboards to BYOB. Buy your own billboard. Think big, think vast. Vastbillboards.co.nz Fran Jonas back into the attack from the Government House end. Uh, starts uh, to Boucher. Play from the crease line through square leg. Rosen quickly to prevent anything other than a single being taken. And Boucher's a real problem for New Zealand. She's 37 off 27 and England are 55 for one. Our coverage is with Rosine, the paint professionals use. Jonas very quickly between balls as she's in again from around the wicket. Here's a reverse sweep attempt. That's oh. a play to extra cover. <laughs> figure that one out. Yeah. I can't figure that one out. But this is a big spell into the wind now for Fran Jonas, who probably is more comfortable with the wind behind her, as every bowler is, let's be honest. Capsi 8 off 14. What's she going to do? She's going to come down the wicket and hit up Ishley. Glorious. Through it. Mid off. Out the fence for four. Long off his back too. Who had, what, eight, nine metres to get? But that hits the rope right in front of the old scoreboard. That's as good a shot as Capsi has played today. She's 12. It's 59 for one. Yeah, used her feet well. Came down to the pitch of it and knows if she gets it half well and especially if it's aerial, she's going to get the wind behind it, Capsi. And Susie Bates did an extra cover. Bet her on her right shoulder and bet, I think, it's Rosemary Mayer down there on her left shoulder. Straight a leg stump line. Tickled around the corner by Capsi. Trickles out beyond the circle. Just a run can only be had. It's 60 for the loss of one. The run rate is just under seven. 6.92 to be exact. Sorry, it's just Kerr down there at long off. Had no real chance. Hit well. But with plenty of wickets in the change room, the English know they can come hard. They can use their feet. They can swing hard. It's a sweep attempt nicely taken down the leg side by Gaze. Problem is it is a wide. It's a nice take. Nice hands. I don't, I don't think Gaze's positioning is ever the issue or a head position. Or It's almost like sometimes just those hands are a little hard and don't give with the ball. Push up towards Long on for a single. 
62 for the loss of one. Boucher up to 38. I think you identified it in the first over with Jess Kerr bowling to her. The first one, it wasn't a chance, but like the hands were you know, fully extended. They didn't see much give. Much quicker through the air from uh, Jonas. Angling into the right-hander. It was coming down the wicket premeditatedly. was uh, Capsie, just a single. Pretty tidy over. Despite that boundary, after nine, England are 63 for the loss of one as they approach the halfway stage at seven and over. The team at PGG Rights and Turf are all about the delivery of high-performance turf grass solutions. They've been in the business for over 40 years, so they know what it takes to deliver a top-quality result for your needs. From pro sports turf and turf landscaping through to revegetation and erosion control, their highly skilled team knows every aspect of the turf and environmental markets. To find out more about how they can help with your turf grass solutions, visit pggrightsandturf.com. SNZ Live from the Basin Reserve with Razine quality paint and colours for your summer projects. Jess Kerr's back into the attack. Mealy Kerr out. It's one Kerr for another. And Wellingtonian for another. Will be the right hand to Capsie on strike with Gay standing up. Deep square leg, mid wicket long on back. So heavily packed offside field as Capsie drives up towards mid off and curves straight into that accuracy. Bowling down one, getting just enough swing today. You know, her pushing into the breeze would be quite hard to actually land it on the old tea towel. Some players just will never get the experience of bowling into this wind, yeah. will they? And she's one of them, Jess Kerr. Needs that wind behind her, really. Which is a good space for her to be in. Nice bowling, top of off stump. Old fashioned, but it's always demanding. Turn to mid wicket just for a single. 64 for the loss of one. Uh, physio's reappeared. So Sophie Devine has not for New Zealand. I'm unsure if she's snuck in for a open country drinks break, maybe. Open country doesn't bring you a summer of New Zealand's best cricket with the Black Caps. Surely not. But as Jacob Borum spotted a couple of overs ago, after she bowled one over, she immediately ran off the field and was signalling to the physio to follow her. We'll follow that with uh, great interest as Kerr bowls a little bit wider to an advancing uh, Boucher who tees off, gets it over mid-off. She didn't strike it all that well. It's hit high on the bat, but she's such a lovely stroke maker. It's sailed well over Hannah Rowe and down to that unprotected rope for four. And England just on the advance at the moment. Jacob over the last three and a half, over 68 for one. That's a great shot because with Jess Kerr's in-swing to the right hand, do you think the natural arc or swing will take to the leg side? But to be able to almost keep your body on the leg side of the ball and swing away over mid-off, long off towards long off, and as we talk, Rosary Mayer comes up from cover. Hannah Rowe now drops back to long off, but a good shot by Boucher. Kerr past the umpire, drifting into the legs of the right-hander, flicks around the corner, got one, wants two, she is quick. Good judge of a run. Ran the first one hard. Knew she'll be coming back down Breeze. And two to her name. She moves to 44 off 30. 70 for the loss of one. Are, Putting the foot down now. Both these, both these batters for England. The only thing I can think about with Sophie Devine is, well, apart from an injury, obviously, maybe we know Sophie Devine's diabetic. Maybe something to do with mm. that. Here's a caught and bowl chance that's put down. High into the left, two hands up. Jessica's thumped her thigh, and that tells you all you need to know. She knows it was sharpish, but needs to be taken. And New Zealand again guilty of not taking those 50-50s. Yeah, that's three now. There's three opportunities. And Nick is stumping now, caught and bowled. And you don't want to have to be getting 13 wickets against an English side. <laughs> Could have four. They've only got one. Glorious flick off the pads uh, through mid-wicket. Should get two. Matty Green's good fielder, but the placement, so good from Boucher. Really does look in rich form. 46. Kerr curses herself. The end of 10. England well positioned. 72 for one at the halfway stage. Hi, Paul here from Waterforce. Keeping your lawns, gardens, parks, subdivisions, sports fields and golf courses looking green and lush is what we do best. We're also experts in improving water quality so it's safe to drink and use. We help a wide variety of residential and commercial clients around New Zealand to use their water as efficiently and effectively as possible. Waterforce offers custom design solutions for your individual needs and supplies the best quality products and equipment for the job. Download our home irrigation planning guide to get started at waterforce.co.nz. 
37 runs have been scored over the last four overs by England. They really are pushing on here at the Basin Reserve. Our coverage is with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. On the scoreboard, it reads 72 for the loss of one. The only one to miss out, Danny White, back into the side. Losing her wicket court gaze, Bold Mayor for nine. But it's the My Boucher show, really, the series. 43 not out, playing a secondary role to Heather Knight on that way to a victory. Brilliant 70 odd in game number three. A failure of 12 of 20. Game number two. She is 46 off 32. And Hannah Rowe is going to come back into the attack from the government house. It's going to be bowling around the wicket here, Jacob, with a long on, a deep mid wicket, a deep backward square, and a long leg. Fine leg, very fine. Mm. So she's aiming at her and caps his feet. That's the line she'll be wanting. No width whatsoever outside off stump. Five inside the circle on the offside, and she's beaten her outside of off stump. Yeah, Angling across, just. trying to drive, <laughs> and catch his play down the wrong line. Well, this is a line or a method that Hannah Rowe did try to employ at the back end of the Super Smash, and she's comfortable with it, which is the main thing. You know, I've got a, a theory that nothing's really wrong if you can execute yeah. a plan, what you're trying to do, you know, nothing can be really right or wrong. There are probably high percentages of what you can do, but it's all about Hannah Rowe getting this line right. It was very wide of the crease, slower this time, rolling the fingers over. It's played away into the point region and caps his body language. Tells me she's really frustrated with herself. It's the joy of this game, the pain of this game. It's a team game played by an individual, and she knows 15 off 21 is not good enough. She also knows that potentially was a chance. Thankfully for Hannah Rowe, it was a slower ball, but that provided a little bit of width. Just not quick enough to get onto it. Crowd watching on, most on the embankment. Shorter. Here's a top edge pole. Can they take a catch? Jonas is not going to get there. It lands about five metres in front of her. Didn't hang up enough in that breeze. It so often can here. You know, we've seen it over the years. Neil Wagner getting people to play those shots. And they hold up for what seems like eternity. That one went down way too quickly from a New Zealand perspective. 73 for one, a single. Neil Wagner got people hooking. What? <laughs> Shocked me. Um, just on the Sophie Devine watch. Um, just in between overs, there's plenty of movement happening down in the New Zealand dugout. Conversations with physios and the New Zealand manager, the White Ferns manager, talking to the reserve umpire and even the whole match manager. So I'm not sure what's going on. We'll keep you posted. Now the short one, well bowled as it travels over leg stump. And uh, Bushy is looking rather awkward. It's the form she's showed so far. It's... Uh, a real compliment to Rowe. It was pace on, 106 Ks, and hurried on to her. Well, even if Boucher hits that, it's into the wind. If she hooks it, it's into the wind. Plus, you've got a deep backward square and a fine league in place, and they're quite fine. I really like this by the White Ferns and Hannah Rowe. 73 for one, it remains. Rowe, and again, Boucher comes down the wicket, hits towards long on, oh. just to the left of Matty Green on the half volley, who does neither catch it nor stop it. Four runs. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think you've got to go for that. I really do. Boucher is 50 off 34 balls, but it's such a big wicket. And they've already put her down with a cord and bold and a miss stumping. And actually, she was also... She's, she's had three yeah, lives. She's, she's had, had the three had, lives, Boucher. Three lives. So she's on to her fourth innings. And she's playing the last innings of her test match today. <laughs> but I think running to her right from long on, I reckon Maddie Green's got to have a chance. She's got to have a dart for it and see what can happen. It's such a big wicket, such a crucial moment in the match. One of those ones, she's run around rather than a direct line too. Here's Rowe. Wider of off stump and a beautiful reverse scoop. Got her positioning perfectly, was ready for it and has taken a ball that would have what, hit maybe middle, middle and off mm. and she's got it down to the fence for four. Boucher, brilliant again, 54 off 35. England after 11 or 81 for one. Yeah, you... The hallway with dated wallpaper. Yeah, some people might call it chic, but to you, it just looks tired. What's the easiest way to remove old wallpaper, though? Are you putting off your decorating project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask the team at your local Resine Colour Shop for all you need on the best wallpaper, prep and hanging techniques so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with Resine. 
Mealy Kerr back into the attack from the Van Stand end. Her first ball is well bowled as Capsy was down, looking to give it a real lick and then bailed out and just poked it into the offside. There's no run. 81 for one to start the 12th over. Our coverage is with Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust Kerr and went for 11 off her first over. The league spinner in again is a reverse sweep that's played beautifully. Just forward of point for one. Capsy coming back for a second. The throw not in time. It was a close run thing, but well done to the English pair. 83 for one. Jacob Orham still getting his head around that reverse scoop played by Boucher in the last over. Well, yeah, both of those, that just shows both of them. Boucher plays one, Capsy plays that. Just shows the skill level of these players. Hit that very sweetly. Here's uh, Capsy advancing and trying to head over the onside. Drags it towards long on for a single. So run rate 7.3. What will they be happy with? With such a good base, Jacob. 84 for one. We're in the 12th over. Not 7.3. I'm pretty <laughs> sure of that. Um, they would be wanting... So that's getting you around... Well, not enough. They would want 160 minimum with this foundation. Off the back foot, Boucher's going to turn the ball to the onside for a single through mid-on. Moving to 55. 85 for the loss of one. Just being able to see via the... Camera work, the TVNZ coverage, peering into the Ewan Chatfield Pavilion, which is the players' pavilion. So Sophie Devine sitting there and looking very unimpressed. Here's a, a lofted drive that will get over the inner circle at extra coven. So much real estate out there. And a four. Cap seat. Nice stroke. Not quite there, but enough bat on it. Takes the score up to 89 for one. It's really interesting for me to sit here and watch at the international level how the opposition player, Mealy Kerr, who, as you would know, when she bowls for the blaze, there is... Panic. <laughs> <laughs> Panic is putting it nicely. And, and Mealy Kerr is a great bowler, don't get me wrong, but they attack her so much more at this level. His reverse sweep attempt, it's hit the pad. It was probably missing leg. Start might have been a wrong. And the dot to end at the over, so 12 overs in. It's 89 for the loss of one. White gone for nine, the only wicket to fall. I'll quickly look at the New Zealand bowling at figures. As Mayers bowl two overs, one for seven. Kerr, three overs, none for 18. Hannah Rowe, none for 23 off two. Jonas, none for 13 off two. Devine, who has left the field, none for eight off her one. And Mealy Kerr's now bowled two overs, for 19. Rosemary Mayer back into the attack once more from the southern end of the ground. So pushing up into this very stiff nor Norwester. Susie Bates, the on-field captain with Devine off the field, is having a chat with her. Probably saying something along the lines of, please get me a wicket. Yeah. Yeah, and she's got a chance. We know that Rosemary has bowled well this season, in particular today. Bowled extremely well, Rosie Mayer. Two overs, one for seven in the big wicket earlier on of Danny White. So if anyone's going to do it, it's probably going to be Mayer. 89 for one as we start the 13th over. Lucky there, Fran Jonas forgot the plan. Nearly stayed back at fine leg. Would have been a no ball with too many outside the ring. Steady five runs for England over the last five or six. As Mayer has a bush here driving. Can't get it past the extra cover. Bates does the fielding. So 54 runs have taken off the last nine over. So what's that nine and over? Maybe if you can go 10 and over over these last few for England, you're looking at a score of, what, 170, 169. Yeah. Exactly. That, 10 that's runs what over. they'll be wanting with nine wickets and some firepower in the shed. And a set to two set players. Boucher pushes softly towards her. Bates, she throws. Before she digs in one of the U surfaces in front of the stumps and took all pace out of it. I think Boucher still might have crept home. It turned into an easier run thing. 90 for the loss of one with that single. I wonder if Boucher's injured herself here as well. She's just come up a bit ginger after that quick single and is flexing that left quad, I think. Not happy with something. Keep an eye on that as well. Capsi on strike. Backs away outside leg and then uh, pushes the ball back past the bowler. Very straight. Just a single. Capsi to 24. 92 for one. And Boucher's definitely injured. She limped through that and has now already called for the physio herself. So, not happy with something. That's no good. Down on her haunches now. 
Well, we might take uh, this opportunity. She will see, receive some attention. It'll be a real shame. She's played a beautiful hand thus far. 56 off 38. Capsi is 24 off 28. Halfway th- through the 13th over. England humming along. 91 for the loss of one back very shortly at the Basin. Are you investing in advertising and not getting the results you need? Add digital billboards to your marketing mix for cost-effective, aspiring advertising with vast billboards. Visualise your brand up in lights 24-7, bold and bright. If you thought advertising on a digital billboard was too costly, think again. The Vast team can have your business live within a day on a billboard that suits your geographic or audience needs. For advertising, think big, think vast. Vastbillboards.co.nz Hmm, if I'm injured fishing off those dodgy rocks on the cliff this weekend, who'll spoil the grandkids? Have a hmm and ask yourself, if you get hurt, who gets harmed? Find out more at acc.co.nz. Busy making a crease in the sofa as you watch batsmen at the crease? Well, you won't want to risk leaving the couch because you might miss this ball, the next ball, or the delivery after that. Best get your dinner delivered instead. Maccas, we deliver. SCNZ Live at the Basin Reserve today with Rosine Quality Paint and Colours for your summer projects. England are 91 for the loss of one. New Zealand won the toss, decided to have a bowl and this is the fourth of five T20 internationals. England lead the series by two matches to one. Uh, Boucher and Capsi have put on a great partnership. 62 of 50 balls and uh, Boucher though is receiving some attention. Uh, Jacob Borum. Self-deprecation on your uh, behalf a little bit earlier. You said you can spot an injury a mile off. Gee, you're, you're two from two today. Well, it's not hard <laughs> when someone <laughs> runs through and then pulls up short and then flexes <laughs> her leg and then very next ball, a quick single. Well, not even a quick single, actually. It was an easy single, and that's the thing. And she limped through straight away, waved over to her dugout for the physio to come out. Had a good stretch. Obviously had some pills or something to drink now. And for the greater good of this game and the way she's playing and some of the beautiful shots in particular, you know, that six over long on of Hannah Rowe earlier. You know, it's just good to see good cricket out there and hopefully she can continue, not for too long, and then the White Ferns get her out. Yeah. Uh, of course, Sophie Devine's still off for the White Ferns, which is a real cause of concern. Uh, no official word from the camp. We'll uh, try and uh, get that when we get it to you. So what, what does Boucher's attention has received her... Treatment from the English team physio. Still stretching it quite a bit, that left uh, quad of hers. Generally in this uh, in these circumstances, does a player just test running again and then decide, I'll just, I'll just swing for the fences maybe? I if think she's of, swinging. She's on strike. She's dancing down the wicket and hitting uppishly. But sweetly through Widish mid-off. That should allow them to come back for a second. Hobbling back, but she's running to the non-danger end. And 93 for one. She, Boucher goes to 58. It's a beautiful shot, though. I mean, that's a good ball by Rosemary. Just back of a length, straight. And she's just able to get good power on that length and get it to the right of extra cover. And an easy two, although she is definitely swinging that leg through. She's not really running. Squats at the knee, backs outside of leg stump, goes hard at it, gets a top edge, sails over backward point down to the fence for four. 62 off 40. Boucher really is pushing go. It's 97 for one. That's a little bit of the issue with this field, which is so leg side dominant on the boundary in particular, because that's a straight ball, but she knows the line that Rosemary Mears is trying to bowl, so she can adapt herself and her positioning. She just sh- shifted herself out to the leg side, and that created width for her to swing her arms and slash it away behind point for four. Last ball of the 13th over. Spotting stroke as she comes down. The wicket sort of tennis style as she spanks the ball up towards long on. Single at the end of 13. Boucher's now 63 off 41. Capsi's 24 off 28. No, she is signalling again. We've got a player running out water and what, a message. That, yeah, and rightly umpire Black, can you get off the field, please? Mm. Yes, I think that's this Heath. Does that shorten the gap between innings? I always forget I bloody rules and protocols around it. Or is there a set time between innings? 15 minutes. Set time, no matter what. So in theory, you could just push out. Well, there is that extra, there is a maximum 
extra time they can have. Yeah, they can add hour? on to the game, yeah. Yeah. So everything will get pushed back. So Bates into the attack. Hero of game number three. Bowling around the wicket as she did in that final over. She's going to be pulled away, though. All top edge more than anything down towards fine leg. We'll come back for 200 is up for England. It's 100 for the loss of one. Boucher moves to 65. So Bates will bowl with a deep backward square. Deep mid wicket. A long on. Long off. Bowling her offies from around the wicket. The breeze behind her. She targets off stump. Looking to sweep the ball away into a gap. Caps, he's coming back. Throw needs to go to the other end with the hobbled right hand and taking an age to get back. Mm -hmm. But the throw went via Matty Green to the striker's end and Caps, he ran hard. 102 for one. Well, if that quad was just a niggle to start with, it's now, it's now torn off the bone with these singles and twos. She's running Boucher and she's now using the bat as almost like a, a ski pole trying to drag herself along <laughs> between the wickets. So she's struggling. She's still swinging hard. She's still hitting the ball well and getting runs. But, you know, you start to think of the rest of the series, potentially with only a 48 hours between the last two of these T20s and then the first one day or on Monday. For her sake and England's sake, I hope it's not too bad, but she's pushing it hard here. here is All action as far as the, the sirens of the basin. Boucher down, hits her powerfully through mid-wicket on the up. Couple of bounces uh, before it reaches the field. Usually thrown back. 68 to Boucher. 103 for one. So consecutive 50s. The first in her T20 career. Looking to top that score of 71. Game number three. I didn't think her quad was bad enough for an ambulance. Coming in. Well, lots of quad injuries at the Basin. Bates goes over the wicket this time. Punched into the cover reach and there's going to be no run. The ball is fizzed back with great anger by Rosemary Mayer. Fast bowlers throw that one. Problem was it just short hopped the keeper. Good backing up. Update. Sophie Devine has left the field after picking up a quad strain while bowling and has been replaced in the field. Devine won't return to the field during the bowling innings and a decision is still to be made as to whether she will be available to bat. Here is a uh, sweep out towards deep backward square of the bat of uh, Capsi for a single. Moving to 25. It's 104 for one. There we go. Yeah, like you say, quads. Injury of the day. That's not good for the White Ferns. I mean, thankfully, they have the bowling depth to cover her overs, but if she can't bat at all or to her maximum capacity, that's a huge hole. Really is. And which can't be filled for this game or any other game in the series. Reverse sweep goes to short third man. No run. Pretty tidy over from Bates. She conceded to six runs off it. And England now after 14 up. 104 for the loss of one back shortly. Hi, Paul from Waterforce. As a customer, you want it all. The backing of a national operation with a local operator that knows your water needs. That's why thousands of Kiwis just like John Richmond have chosen Waterforce as their water management partner. So I would recommend Waterforce for anyone else. They're just pros at what they're doing. They made it pretty seamless and easy, really good to work with and um, happy to compromise and change things to, to suit our system. Visit waterforce.co.nz today to find out more. Fran Jonas, her third over, none for 13 thus far. Ball's played off the back foot by uh, Capsi straight to point. There's going to be no addition. And that's the sort of shot I think the dugout would not be happy with Capsi, who, you know, at the stage of the innings with six overs left and someone who's been in for 30 deliveries can't just push. Here's a reverse sweep attempt and she's gone wandering. She's lost the ball and she's going to be stumped. Fran Jonas went up for an LBW shout. Capsi was looking around. Where's the ball? Well, it's perched right next to the league stump. And as he goes, goes, thank you very much. I'll pick it up and take the bail off. Embarrassing moment for Capsi. She has to go. New Zealand have a wicket. Yeah, not a great way to look at that. Not a great way to finish for Capsi. An innings which stuttered long. Just a mishit reverse sweep. Rolled through. Oh, did Fran Jonas Ooh. have the ball? Did Izzy Gay? Oh, I'd like to I mean, see yeah, that Izzy again Gaze, you're right, on sorry. the GJ Gardner Holmes replay. I think she's lost the ball. As she, it's a, a comedy of errors. Well, one hasn't been picked up. Let's see that. That's Silver Brunt, just the play you want to see with the score at 104 for two come out in the 15th over, right? Yeah. 
and not if you're wearing black. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I missed time, missed completely reverse sweep, which hit her pad, rolled away. Like you said, Capsy didn't know where it was going, and it actually just rolling back towards the keeper. So as she left her ground, as he goes, just took the bails off. We think in time before she dropped the ball. But you're right, here comes Nat Siverbrun, the best players in the world. The right-hander waits for Jonas to go short, and she pulls away through mid-wicket uh, towards Mili Kura. Single 105 for the loss of Tuba on the 15th over. Now to her Mumbai Indians teammate, Mili Kura. That's the landscape now of this woman's game, much like the men's game. And there it is again. I think Izzy Gaze just had the ball long enough. So as it rolled the past the leg stump. Oh, Jacob, I'm not so sure. He's a thunderous drive towards our Bates. But the run's just drying up when you want to be pushing forward, England, from the platform of that. But that reverse sweeps at the toe end of the bat, gone forward, and then spun back, mm. nearly hit leg stump. And Gaze is right next to it. I'm not sure she's holding on to it. Here's a slog sweep out towards deep mid wicket. Six runs. Don't need to run with the dodgy quad if you hit it like that, Meyer. 74 career best innings. And she's got a thirst for more. It's 1-1-1 one, one, one for two. A lovely shot. I actually saw the shot and looked at Amelia Kerr straight away at mid-wicket. And she gave it up fairly quickly. So I knew it was going all the way. Good timing again. Out. That's the big pocket we were talking about before. And that's a nice release for this English side who haven't been able to hit boundaries lately. Slower outside of off stump, waiting, slicing a drive out through cover point for a single. Lucia moves to 75, the end of the 15th over. England, 1-1-2 one, one, for the loss of two. Imagine a deck where you can invite people around to enjoy the afternoon. The deck looks good and no one slips on the mould. Are you putting off your painting project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask the team at your local resin colour shop for all the help you need on the best wood stains, prep and staining techniques for your project so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with resin. Our coverage with resin, the Paint Kiwis Trust. England, 112 for the loss of two. Five overs remain. Kerr back into the attack. She bowls to uh, Siva Brunt, who smokes it through squarely. That's Boucher. My apologies. Gee, that's an awesome shot, Jacob Borum. It's not all that short, but the power, the power for which that raced away to the squarely boundary for four. So impressive. Yeah, interesting field set, though. Deep cover, long off. And with only four all outside the, outside the, the ring, that means you've only got two on the leg side. And that is just mid-wicket and long on. So anything remotely short that Boucher can get to square leg will be four. And that's a better length. Worked up through mid-on for a single. Boucher. Wow, he's got 80 of the 117 runs. And you know, nearly 70% of the runs scored. Hogging the strike, eh? Yeah, and she's been let off the hook once, twice, three times <laughs> by New Zealand. There is a message. I don't need to tell them what it is. Slower through the air, sort of yorking the right hand of Silver Brunt, who was leaning forward, wanting to be assertive of the footwork, works the ball through mid on for a single, 118 for the loss of two. The one thing New Zealand have avoided, though, nicely here, Jacob, is a really big overall two. Mm. 14 off the third inside the power play, and the eighth over went for 11. The only overs, double figures. Here's a sweep attempt from well outside of off stump, trying to hit backward a square and that's really going to stretch that uh, quad muscle dot as it goes into the pads. Well, that's what I was saying before after that six, is that the wide have done so well to restrict the boundaries throughout probably the last five or six overs. There's been plenty of ones and twos, but that's not going to kill you. There's Boucher slicing a drive attempt that's going to just fall agonisingly out of the reach of Lee Kasbrook, who's on the substitute fielder. She was at full length. Not the tallest. She had a couple of extra inches. She might have got that one. 109 21 for the loss of two as they come back for two. And always happens to the reserve fielder as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it is the fourth chance, but so there's been three others to... Oh, she did get a I hand on it. I think you've got to catch that. I really do. I know she's sort of diving or falling away, but should low, have been caught. Low full toss. Worked away through mid-wicket. 
there's any other player out there. I think England come back for two, but with Boucher battling, they hold up and keep it at one. So 122 for the loss of two. Boucher's 83 for four herself. Yeah, it was the toughest of the chances, but indeed on the GJ Gardner Holmes replay, definitely just grazed the fingers of Casper. It's been the summer of the drop season, New Zealand. Mm. Oh, yeah. Both men's and women's side have struggled to catch. Well, I, I was coaching with the Black Caps through that T20 series against Australia, and I couldn't believe it. 13, um, was it? 13 dropped? <laughs> it was a lot, yeah. I don't know the exact number, but I... It was close to that. And I couldn't, because there are some good oh, some no. good fielders were dropping that. I remember actually the test match here, which I wasn't involved with, but watching it, and Henry Nichols, who has got amazing hands, and he dropped that one out there towards the embankment. That sky where he was literally standing under it set and just shelled it, which you do not see often. Kerr into the attack from uh, Adelaide Road end, and that's a nasty blow as it hits. Silver Brunt where on the inside portion of her front knee. Oh, no, it's uh, it's actually hopped up. Let's check the replay here into the midriff. Not sure if she's got a top edge on this one. It's quite full of length. Oh, she takes a huge deep breath. <laughs> Tries to gather herself because Jessica is already running in. Jessica, none for 18. This is her final over. She gets leg side and it's flicked over the top of short fine leg. Long chase for Rose, a good athlete around to her right. She gets there just, almost crept under her legs and into the rope. They'll come back for a couple. So Silver Brunt moves to five off five. It's 124 for two. Same sort of delivery, really. First and second ball. The first one, Silver Brunt missed and hit her somewhere in the midriff. And then that one there managed to get some bat on it, flick it over that short, fine leg. Thankfully for the White Ferns, not the same, or well, not the timing that Silver Brunt would have liked. And we'll field it by Rowe running around from deep square. Brunt's beaten beautifully, bowled by Kerr. She swung and she's missed by a long, long way. I think she's held that one back as she's trying to target the onside. Yeah, big leg cutter. That's beautifully bowled that. It's beaten everyone. I mean, Silver Brunt was about a week too early in that shot. Might have even held in the surface, and then Gaze couldn't quite get the mitts around it either. Looking to target that onside to start Brunt. Now she goes across her stumps and scoops it fine. Par short, fine leg for four. Stroke making ability right up there with the very best. Her first boundary. Nine to her name, the score 128 for two. Well, it's just, well, it's not great bowling, actually. You see the replay, it's going way down leg anyway, so Silverbrunt's almost in the end. She's lapping it, but it's like a leg glance because it's heading down that way. But the ability to want to swing the ball away through mid-wicket cow corner with power for one ball and then the subtlety of getting down on a knee and lapping it is, is really good skills. Now outside a leg stump, hitting it over, extra cover, into a gap, four runs. Only one back on the offside. That's it long off. If you can play that stroke. Gee, you're a nightmare. You're a nightmare in women's cricket if you can powerfully hit to the onside and then play an inside out, lofted drive. Sumptuous cricket, 132 for two. Well, I think you're a nightmare in any cricket if you've got power, and Silverbrunt does, and she's gone. I mean, she played a miss to one through the leg side, then she's lapping. Now she's moving to the off to the onside to hit over extra cover. It's just quality batting, full stop. Kerr, her response will be slower. Length ball powered up through uh, mid-on. They've got one. They're going to come back because there was a little fumble by Maddie Green, and despite having a tight quad, Boucher pushing through the pain. Two runs to end the over. 133 for the loss of two England after 17. Bailey's is New Zealand's number one rural real estate brand and they've just launched their country portfolio. This special edition showcases the country's latest rural and lifestyle opportunities for sale and celebrates Bailey's 25 years of connecting people with property. Bailey's country legendary professionalism means that they're always ready to help build your rural property legacy. Bailey's are altogether better at rural real estate. For your copy of the country portfolio, visit baileys.co.nz. Licensed under the REAA 2008. 134 for two. The last two overs have picked up 11 and 10 runs respectively, so 21. As they look to push on and f finish in f similar fashion to what they did in game number two and in Nelson, where they scored 69 off the last six overs. 
put themselves in a winning position that day. Here's a reverse sweep attempt that's uh, well taken by Gaze behind the wicket as uh, the right-hander Boucher misses, swinging hard, maybe a little bit too hard for that stroke. 134 for two, it remains. Well, Boucher will be disappointed because that was wide enough outside the off stump to almost be in perfect position for... Now she goes across <laughs> her stumps and sweeps conventionally but goes deliberately from low to up. Sets the ball sailing down towards the gate. Four runs, 138 for the loss of two, her 11th four. Well, you, you almost can't defend against this at the moment. We saw that in Siva Brunt, the last over. She can hit leg and offside in front of the wicket, behind the wicket. And the same thing here with Boucher. So Rose Ramirez comes up from long off and they drop deep square back. And she's likely now to hit it over extra cover or mid off. Kerr goes wider of off stump and it's smoked over mid off. One of the best shots of the day. One bounce for glorious. Boucher to 91, 142 for two. Well, I mean, I called it, but it's it's almost obvious because of the way, I mean, she's been in for a long time here, Boucher. She's faced 54 balls or 55 balls now. But the way both of these batters have been toying with the field and basically hitting the ball wherever field is being moved from. Now hit to extra cover, should be taken, is by Bates. Again, you see the idea. She's seeing the field well, looking for a gap. Went outside of leg stump, but just got the bottom of the bat. Couldn't get it over Bates. But Maya Boucher has been breathtaking at best in the series. She's got to go with inside of her maiden T20 International 100. She'll be devastated at that, but 91 off 56. That's a great innings especially when you consider she's carried a leg injury for the second half of it. So she may have actually missed out on a few runs as well with some limping between the wickets. But it was a great innings, 91 of 56. And some beautiful shots to and over the boundary. Well played, Maya Boucher. 25-year-old set, you would think, for a long time in this English setup. And here the Knight comes out with the score at 142 for the loss of three. Kerr. Picking up a wicket, but going for consecutive boundaries prior to that. Sort of unfamiliar looking figures for the outstanding New Zealand all-rounder. Kurt, one for 37 off 3.4, but I think Jacob Warren about 15 minutes ago just summed it up perfectly. Compared to when she's bowling at this venue in New Zealand domestic cricket and people are panicking. It's been the other way. That, that whoever's been out there facing it want to set the tone to Mealy Kerr, putting her under pressure. No bowler likes being under pressure. She's a reverse sweep from Knight. She falls over, but guess what? Another misfield. Hits straight to Casper. It goes through her legs, and here the Knight, who was face planted down after slipping, gets a very easy single. And unfortunately, brings Siva Brunt back on strike. Well, we saw exactly the same thing in the second over by Fran Jonas in a similar position. I mean, that's just hit straight to Lee Casper, and it's a. Now short, pulled away, down to the fence at fine leg. It's a poor ball, has to be said. Way too leg side, almost fearsome. Feared, rather, the power of Siva Brunt. And, well, that's whacked away. At the end of 18, with two overs remaining, England set for a big one at the base, and it's 147 for three. Get so much more with the great carrot store from Carrot Every Aucklander deserves to have a strong, safe, secure Garador Auckland garage door. From Wellsford to Waiuku, Garador Auckland service the whole of Auckland and with a 10-year warranty, they're hard to beat. GaradorAuckland.co.nz Get so much more with the great garage door from Garador. Two overs remain. New Zealand need to stop the bleeding. England are on a real roll now. 147 for three. Our coverage is Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. The first ball of the over, bowled by Rosemary Mayer from the Government House end, pushed up towards Long On for a single. Maddie Green in towards the 30 metre circle to field. How often do you see it to end that last over? Misfield to a new player. And this set batter, Siva Brunt, on strike. And I know it was a poor ball, short down the leg side. And neither Knight probably would have put it away as well. But the set player just puts it away with ease. And you sort of look back at that misfielding fielder and you think, thank you very much. It's a good delivery, full. Whipped away through mid-wicket, though. Just shy of that Yorker length, but hard to get elevation on. 149 for three. 
It's a great spell today by Mia. She's into the wind. All four overs. It's all four, is that correct? I yeah, think that's it. right, yeah. All four overs into this. Oh, it's still doubt died down. I mean, it's still a wind. It's a windy day, but it's not quite what it was at the start of the innings. And Mia's had to front up into that the whole four innings, the whole four overs of her spell. She comes in again. Length ball that's crunched back past the bowler. She tried to get a right hand up. It would have been an absolute spectacular catch, but it's a better stroke because uh, Ether Knight's only faced three balls. That was her third. She's whacked it away to the long off boundary for four. 150 is up. That's a number. One, five, three for three. Halfway through the 19th. Just a length ball. And you're hoping that Ether Knight drags that to the leg side where the four fielders on the boundary are, but... She's good enough to hold her shape, keep that shoulder in a side-on position, and then that way she can still access through the offside of that straight line. It's a short ball and sort of uh, lofting the border deep backward, point and running back and almost taking the catch. I think it was bizarre tonight. Mm. Sort of went, tried to guide the ball past the inner circle, got underneath, and that allowed them to rush after it. Is that another finger on? We'll have it to is. check the GJ Gardner Holmes replay, but New Zealand have the dropsies today. Well, running backwards, bouncer, and all here the night. She could, she did well to reach it, actually. All she could do is really just poke it over backward point. Bezadenhout, who is at in the ring at backward point there, running back over her left shoulder. And another one that is a tough catch, but really you've got to take it. 155 for three. Knight goes across her stumps and scoops over short, fine leg. While she's toying with the field. That's only landed three or four metres away from a retreating Jonas. Come back for two as Jonas gets it inside the boundary rope. Knight's quickly on to ten of five. One, five, seven for three. But that's what I was saying before, and you, you just mentioned toying with the field. You did right. Fran Jonas was back at fine leg with mid-off up before that ball. They decide to put mid-off back to long off. Fran Jones comes up and here the night says, OK, well, I'll just hit it where you've just moved that fielder. Let's have a bit of fun. Now that field's changing back again. So let's see if Knight now goes, looks to go to leg side and hit more over mid-off through the covers. That's where the gap would be. She does back away, but uh, credit Mayor, she followed her and hit the length well. It's a hey, Yorker. It trickles out to the onside with no real pace and they'll be able to steal a second, but... You know, if you're a skipper and bowler, it is frustrating to give away a second, but it's not much more you can ask in that situation. You take two, but the problem is England already inside of 160. It's 159 for three, so going at 8.37 runs and over. Mayer finishes with excellent figures, one for 28 off four overs. And I think 10 of those runs were off the last four balls. As well bowled. It's a good bowl, a good Yorker. Just unfortunate to that big pocket and Mealy Kerr couldn't stop the second run. But if you had said to Rosemary Mayer or Sophie Devine as captain, or now Susie Bates, whoever's going to bowl, bowl in the power play and at the death, into the wind, all 24 balls, and you're going to go at seven and over, I think you'd take that. So not a bad day for Rosemary Mayer so far. There's a sweep attempt that's going to be uh, picked up by short fine leg, Rosemary Mayer Fields. They'll get a run. Silver Brunt moves to 21 of 12, 160 for the loss of three. So 112 for two after 15. Then they've picked up what, 11, 10, 13, 12, the last few overs. Excellent finish. Jonas into her fourth and final. Here's oh. this one, smoke through extra cover. Slashing drive, had to reach for it. Here's one of Jacob Orham's, oh, an appreciation. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, that is, it's a reflex action when I see something good. <laughs> it's just down the wicket. I mean, it's a gutsy play, I think, to have Fran Jonas bowling this 20th over. It might prove me wrong. She might come back in the last four balls, but Heather Knight just came down and met it on its length and smashed it away through cover. Now hits uppishly over extra Callow, more, more square. It's gone, in fact, way through point. There's no one protecting that area. And it's well wide of off stump. Not sure that's the line you need to be bowling there. 165 for the loss of three as Jonas deserves. And here the night makes a pay. Absolute gem of a knock here, 20 off eight. Well, with the only boundary rider on the offside being Hannah Rowe here at long off, 
you just can't afford to be wide. And that was very wide. In fact, Heather Knight, the only reason it went so square at point because she had to do well to reach it. Right. And kind of carved it, if you know what I mean, carved it over that offside as opposed to hitting it like the previous ball. And now decides to come round, or over the wicket, the left arm spinner. 168 for three. She bowls down the leg side and it's uh, pulled away. Oh. Short, fine leg. It balls fired in. Could have been a close run thing if ball hit the stumps. It did not. I think Heather Knight's disappointed. She hasn't put that away to the fence. It's well outside a leg stump. If she leaves it, it's a wide. You only trickled it to short, fine leg. 169 for three. Two balls remaining. Jonas in again. Pitches outside leg stump. Nat Siverbrunt decides, I'm going to bat left-handed. Just hit it away to back the point before. Because I'm Nat Siverbrunt, I can do things like that. She's taken that from what? A foot and a half outside of leg stump? Yeah, having a laugh. They're so good. Like, let's, be, let's just be honest. Like, you know, they've still got... They've got Amy Jones, who's a world-class keeper batter, and Sophia Dunkley, who is, has been opening the batting. There's depth. But you're looking at these two here with their strike rates. Pretty much 200, both of them. Here's a sweep over short fire leg, down to the fence for four. It's been a master class of hitting over the last five overs by England, and they post a very, very big score. 177 for the loss of three. The skipper, Knight, 21 off nine. Nat Siverbrunt, who took a few balls to get going, ends up at 29 off 14. And New Zealand will have to go to incredibly lofty heights and might be down their most feared player and Sophie Devine, who left the field with a quad injury. Still no news on if she will bat. But, well, harsh lesson. Harsh lesson has been... Dish to the New Zealanders, Jacob Borum, over those closing overs. Yeah, look, you've got to take your chances. And I know Dunkley, uh, not Dunkley, sorry, Boucher was the fortunate one in terms of getting those chances through her innings. But it actually catches up with you. And it just means that the likes of Silverbrunt or Knight aren't coming in earlier. You can't put pressure on. You can't build any sort of pressure throughout the innings. And it just means that at the end of the innings, with wickets in hand, you're able to make toll. And that's what the quality side does in England. They have depth, they have power, they have players who can hit all around the ground, and I mean all around the ground. Offside, leg side, in front of the wicket, behind the wicket in particular. And when you throw someone like Fran Jonas to bowl the last against two set experienced players, I was fearful of one outcome, and unfortunately that's the way it happened. Thoughts of Jacob Orham alongside me, Daniel McCarty. Our uh, coverage of the fourth of five T20 internationals with Rosine Quality Paint and Colours for your summer project. So 178 is the target for New Zealand. I'll give you a quick uh, read of the scorecard, then take a break. Uh, Danny Wyatt uh, gone. Court gaze off the bowling of Mir for nine with a score at 29 in the fifth over. Then we saw a big partnership for the second wicket between Alec, uh, Alice Capsa, who made 25 off 32. She sort of battled herself somewhat. The good thing for her at the other end, Maya Boucher was just in rich form, carrying on from that effort in Nelson. She made 91 off 55 at 12 for some of the stroke making, just glorious. Two sixes as well. So 14 times she went either two or beyond the boundary rope in a score of 91 uh, before she was caught. Bates at extra cover off the bowling of Kerr. Jonas had got rid of uh, Capsi, stumped after, uh, by Gay's um, very funny moment. QN sweep attempt, saw the ball spin back to the leg stump. Capsi just went walkabout, completely lost where the ball was, and uh, Zegay just picked up the uh, ball and knocked off the bales. But uh, then, unfortunately, for New Zealand, a, a quite brilliant finish between Nat Silverbrunt, 29 off 14, and Heather Knight, 21 off 9. 177 for three. Two extras, just one wide was bowled by New Zealand, one leg by. Pretty tidy on that front. Rosemary Mayer, four overs, one for 28. Jess Kerr, four overs, none for 30. Hannah Rowe, two overs, no wicket for 23. Fran Jonas, four overs, one for 39. Devine, the one over before she left the field, none for eight. Uh, Millie Kerr, she uh, was made to pay today, one for 42 off her four. And Susie Bates, one over, none for six. So New Zealand need 178 runs after England posted a fine, fine total of 177 for the loss of three. They had partnerships all the way, 29 for the first uh, wicket, then 75 for the second, and then the icing on the cake. Um, over 34 balls, England at, finished with 73 runs, thanks to Silver Brunt and Boucher, and then uh, Heather Knight joining in on the party. Silver Brunt and Knight, 
35 of 14 balls. And New Zealand probably felt pretty good about themselves with five or six overs to go. Be quite a deflating feeling, I, I can only assume, Jacob Warham alongside me, when you've you know, seen things sort of spiral wildly out of control in the last few. Yeah, it's funny. When when you think about it, it's the game's at the halfway mark and one team's gone from batting to bowling, the other obviously vice versa. But it's amazing that feeling you can take into yeah. the change room and how it can actually just filter into your the, the second discipline that you'll be doing in the game. So I've got no doubt that, that you know, they, they might run in or they might they might be clapping and back slapping going on and, you know, we can get this, we can do this. And I, the White Ferns can, don't get me wrong. But you've obviously got one side who is very up for this and is feeling a lot better than the other side because that finish by England in particular, I don't necessarily think the White Ferns pulled that terribly, to be honest with you, Daniel. You know, just like the, the quality of batting from Boucher, and then you thought, OK, well, she's out. Here we go. We've got an opportunity. Well, no. Here the night came out and was just as fearsome as was, I've seen this Nat Sipper Brunt, who we've talked about enough. <laughs> With all these straight... I mean, honestly, it, it's, it's actually great to watch from a neutral, but for yeah. someone who's been involved with the White Ferns and, yeah. you know, New Zealander, I'm trying to be very unbiased, but fantastic to watch that stroke play. The shots all around the ground. You said at one point, toying with the field, they were 100% move a field, it's almost cheeky you move a field, okay I'll hit it there you know and I'm starting to wonder, I know I'm going from a tangent now, in the women's game you're only allowed four outside the ring players are good enough now <laughs> and, and the power has come into the women's game so much the men have five out, just have five more, five out you know and then but not to me and I don't make the rules so. One, one thing I you know, if I'm offer a critique of what I've seen solely in the series alone, like massively small sample size, they do look more cap comfortable, they being England, of course, of playing 360 degrees. In fact, 720 if you take it in that silver brunt batting left-handed at mm. the end. New Zealand tend to be an onside-looking group. Would you, would you say that's fair? That oh, may, Maybe there's not enough players who can access that offside? I think when it comes down to power, like when yeah. you say go and hit a boundary, I think definitely the English yeah. have more options. Exactly. And at the end of the bin innings, when you've got wickets in hand, that's what you're after. Here's Lauren Bell from over the wicket, right arm, medium, fast, starts full of length and pushed by Bates up towards middle. And Bell sprinted onto the field, absolutely sprinted onto the field because there's no chance she's doing a Rosemary Mare and bowling into this wind. Got a strong right. breeze at her back, 113k to start. Tall. Right she up. wouldn't even let the captain finish the sentence. <laughs> Lauren, you're at the... And she's already marking her run-up. <laughs> you're from the north, yeah. with the van standing. A little hop at the top of a mark and then starts uh, barreling in, moves uh, past the umpire, buys a wide half volley that is hit away to the third man fence for four. Bates went hard at it. That was the key. She swung hard, top edge, yep. Third man up and inside the circle. And there is a boundary. Just second ball into this run chase, four without loss. Yeah, a lot of width. In fact, it would have been a wide. We saw one of those earlier to the English, which Boucher nicked the first of her four or five chances, was it? Through slip and keeper. But that time, Susie Bates got enough wood on it over the top of the third man who's inside the ring. No slip, unlike New Zealand, who started on the attack somewhat. Beautiful bowling from Bow, full of length, is nibbling away. Might have just rolled the fingers over it. Susie Bates is all squared up, big smile as she looks back to Bell. It's a nice comeback delivery there. Bell, who does tend to swing the ball back, and not as prodigiously as uh, Jess Kerr, but does well shape it back in. But that just held its line, and you're right, if anything, just nipped away. That's the beauty of bowling with a brand new ball. And with a big uh, title to defend. Bates on the wall, tries to chip onto the onside, leading edge almost as it trickles up towards mid on. There'll be no run. As Danielle Gibson does the fielding. A short third man in point cover, extra cover mid off, mid on mid wicket, the backward square, and a very fine, fine leg. Waits, slightly bent at the knee, back raised around hip height as she comes in, chips it to midway, cut in this court, <laughs> fell over to the offside and just spooned a very easy catch into the mid-wicket region. 
And if New Zealand weren't that fairly deflated before the run chase, they will now because they've lost a key cog. Bates goes. Caught for four. It's four for one. Yeah, that sucks. That really does suck for Susie Bates and the White Ferns. Uh, the ball before, similar sort of shot where she sort of went hard at a good length ball and it hit high up on the bat and went down to, but it was a couple of bounces to mid on. And that one there was maybe a bit straighter, but similar sort of shot where Susie Bates' hands were out in front and could only find the mid-wicket fielder who was in tight to start with. Nice diving catch forward, brings Amelia Kerr out and now my thinking, Daniel starts going ahead to who's coming next, well not next, but it was Sophie Devine going to bat at all even further down the order. Yeah, the last update we had was about 30, 40 minutes ago. Confirmation that she's off the field with a quad strain, that she wasn't going to return during the New Zealand innings in the field. And a decision had yet to be made whether she will be available to bat. I'm not sure you need to check the laws of cricket of, you know, how long does she wait before she's allowed to well, come out? Well, it's from seven down. If it's not an external blow, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, we, we talk about the big three for this White Ferns team. And Sophie Devine, Susie Bates and Amelia Kerr. Well, Susie Bates is out. Sophie Devine might be out through injury. That means it's all on... It's all up to you, Amelia. It's all on M Amelia Kerr to get 100. Three runs away from 1,000 in T20 International Cricket. And she'll get a single first ball as she works it uh, to the onside, just forward of square. The end of the first over, Kerr... One. Bizarre notes yet to face a ball. It's five for the loss of one. The target is 178. Just getting a replay on the GJ Garden Homes replay. And it hits well outside the line, sort of to the offside. On a turn, it's hit high on the bats, just ballooned away. It's soft dismissal by Pates' standards. And all smiles was Bell in the remainder of the English squad. They know what a big wicket that was. Almost a leading edge. Not a genuine leading edge, but very close to it. Just with those hands getting out of front, the bat not being in total control. But a massive wicket nonetheless. So the second over begins full of length. It's worked to uh, backward square leg. There's uh, Silver Brunt back into the side. Opening the bowling, pushing into the breeze. Concedes two runs. Good running between the New Zealand pair as Kerr moves to three. And that is 1,000 T20 international runs. Just a 70th match, averaging 28.57. Some player. of a run. Bowls. Good pace. Nipping back in. Hitting into the midriff of Kerr. Who's backing away towards square leg as that followed her. Yeah, that shocked her a wee bit as well. You could see the look on her face. Almost a little smile to her Mumbai Indians teammate, Ness of a brunt from Amelia Kerr. But I think there was also a bit of... What's happened there? Didn't it back? Just above the thigh pad, I think it hit her. Zivabran now catches the outside edge of the bat as it trickles down through the gully, creeping over the inner circle. Single. Eight for the loss of one. Kerr's four off four. Brunt is showing. Zivabran can... Think she can do a bit of everything. Hit the ball one way, then the other. So Kerr joins Sarah McLeish and Amy Satterthwaite, Sophie Devine, Susie Bates, having scored 1,000 or more T20 runs. Sudden height, looking to back up after a good knock in game number three. She starts with the ball into her hip. I think got a bit of bat on it. We look to umpire Brown. Single will be awarded as the ball goes down towards fine leg. Nine for the loss of one. And the second over. Slip in. Heather Knight at first slip. Third man, long leg. As Silver Brunt does start, has a false start. There's also a point cover. Extra covers creeping in, looking to protect a single. Mid off, mid on. Quite a straight mid wicket as well. Worried about hitting down breeze. Silver Brunt from over the wicket. On the walk and pushing into the onside is Kerr. There won't be a run. That required run rate. I know it's very early, but it's already up 
at 9.3, which is very high already. And for me, if you're getting anywhere near that double figures per over required is almost getting in the too hard basket. Can still be done, absolutely, especially if Amelia Kerr gets herself going and Divine does bat, but something needs to happen fairly early. There's a pull stroke. And the Lord's long leg, a single. Only a single, five runs off the over. New Zealand through two, chasing 178, a 10 for the loss of one. Ah, that gloomy second bedroom. All it needs is, is brightening up. So how do you get started? Do you need to seal the walls before you paint? Are you putting off your painting project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask the team at your local Resine Colour Shop for all the help you need on the best paints, prep and painting techniques for your project so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with Resine. Here is Bell continuing from the van stand in right arm over the wicket starts and dabbing the ball as uh, Kerr into the gully. No run, so Bell been given consecutive overs at the top. 10 for the loss of one, chasing 178. New Zealand has lost it. Susie Bates caught Silver Brunt at mid-wicket off the bowling of Bell for four. And I like the consecutive overs. I like the fact that if you're in a bit of rhythm, you've got a wicket of Susie Bates in your first over. You only went for five. Plus you're bowling downwind. Make the most of it and keep Lauren Bell going. Plus off the big three, two, potentially gone. If you get me like her here... New Zealand in a ginormous hole. I don't know what's going on. There's for three false starts from Bell. She wants to bowl. Maybe there's something wrong with the advertising in front of the sight screen. Keeper Jones putting her arms up, waving cifrously. Cricket will break out again. Here is Bell from the top of her mark. Who's past umpire Black and bowls, but oh. Kerr's running at her and hits a high over mid on. One, two bounces into the fence for four. That's some repost, retort. 14 for one. That's a lovely shot there. That's reminiscent of Boucher in the first innings. In fact, that's probably six if you flip around and Kerr's hitting with the wind. It's a lovely shot. Just shuffled down the wicket, a couple of steps, able to get to that good length ball. Basically turn it into a half volley and just whip it away. Over a wide long on or a wide mid on. And two bounces for four. Lovely shot. Bow bowls four. That's a beauty. It goes past the outside edge. Kerr's feet were really nowhere. In the fourth nor bat, but that's just good bowling. Hits the seam and nips away again. It's too quick for Jones behind the wicket. She drops the ball as it thunders into her gloves. Stinging blow to her right hand. Well, I think Kerr was expecting a shorter ball. She actually went straight back into her into the box, right back in her crease, expecting a short ball to follow up the, the down-the-wicket boundary. And it was well bowled by Bell, who held, held her length. Here is the shorter one. It came one too late. Problem is, it's way too short. Sails high over Kerr's head, and that will be a wide. for one New Zealand Kerr's nine off nine because I didn't hope that the other end going am I going to get another go? I'm one off one Ah oh, the joys of being an opener halfway through the third over Kerr walking again towards Bell Bell bowls wide of off stump she does just to check any attacking stroke pushing to point there will be no run oh, Bally is the call in the English field and Boucher's not out there is she? Court injury. I think that's Bess Heath. It is. At uh, mid on there. Well, the ponytail being pushed around by the breeze, pulled into the onside with no conviction. I thought it was going to balloon to Silver Brunt at mid wicket again. Silver Brunt around to her right hand side. The one thing there that saved Millie Kerr is the lack of timing on it. A single, she will gather, moving it to 10. at 16 for the loss of one. Last one. And the replay of Susie Bates' dismissal, very much a leading edge, actually more so than I thought. Yeah, you see then slow motion and they pause on impact. 
It's most definitely off the edge. Shoulders. We can confirm off. a leading edge. <laughs> the way, the moment it's not even caught, and Susie Bates's shoulders mm. are almost touching the ground because she know you know is a it's a great a feeling. Better. Great it's feeling. A great feeling. Going. What have I done? <laughs> this game sucks. <laughs> Why did I choose this? So, one ball remaining in the third over. A pretty disciplined start from England in the run chase. Picking up the early wicket always helps. So, Bizarre and Hope will get another crack. One off one. Last ball of Bell's over is one for 11. Strong northern air to back. She bowls full. Dab to backward point into a gap. Got one, maybe get a second, but Bazardenhout I think was just a little bit anxious of the ball creeping through the inner circle, so just delayed her push up to the non-striker's end. The end of the third over, New Zealand chasing 170 out of 17 for one. I've always tried to make good choices for my family's future and their happiness. Having an enjoyable and safe building experience is about choosing the right builder. So put your family in safe hands and choose GJ's with their proven track record. In over 25 years of business and with close to 23,000 builds, GJ's has completed every home we've ever started. A fact we're very proud of. Make a wise choice and choose New Zealand's most trusted home builder. GJ's, here today and tomorrow. 17 for the loss of one New Zealand, needing a further 161 runs if they're to square the series and send it to a decider. Our coverage is with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. It's going to be Gibson into the attack, right arm medium pacer from uh, the Adelaide Road end, bowling a wide half volley that's missed out by Bazodenhout, who tried to steer it down towards third man, just slightly missed as it crept inside that uh, wide marker. Danielle Gibson is always smiling, always looks like she's having a grand old time. Just another one of those, that next wave of talent coming through. You've got the likes of Knight, Silver Brunt, Wyatt, Jones, who have been there for years. Lovely side-on action, short cut away. Paul Fielding diving away to her right was Danny Wyatt, has seen a creep under her body. That might cost her side four runs, and it does. Danny Wyatt puts her hands up and sort of apologises. Well, and hope. It's her first boundary, a much needed one for New Zealand. It's 21 for the loss of one, chasing 178. It's a poor bit of fielding. Just to her right. It needed the dive. It wasn't through her legs, Danny White's legs. But it's a harbour bridge. Yeah, you, totally. Yeah. yeah. What I'm trying to say is you should stop that. Yeah. yeah. And someone like Danny White, who is a live wire in the yeah. field, you'll see it on the... She'll go to the boundary as soon as the field spreads, and she's, she's amazing out there on the boundary, but you've got to stop those. around just yeah a little uh, second or two to get back to his position Gibson's ready to go and she'll now start the run up pretty straight approach into the breeze she will bowl full and driven straight towards mid off because I don't know it's off quickly Gee, she likes taking on mid off it cost her her wicket in uh, Nelson when she had to run around the bowler making the extra yard she had to take uh, ultimately a losing yard but uh this was an assured call. She struck it sweetly, called Kerr through. He was late to respond. 22 for one. I think if Eccleston had got that cleanly and we'd had a direct hit, so there's a lot of ifs, yeah. but if that had happened, I think there was actually a chance there. I think Eccleston's with you. She's done the old taking her eye off the ball just the last. Here's our Kerr steering a ball through point. Pass White to her right, out of the fence, and it's going to reach the rope for four. <laughs> Just beautifully controlled by Kerr, dancing down the wicket, then steering the ball into the gap through the offside. Quality stroke. She's 14. It's 26 for one. And the second time in three balls where Charlie Dean at cover is teased out to the boundary. <laughs> the second time in three balls she's taken a dive and just missed it into the rope. But yeah, lovely play. Feet again by Mealy Kerr, turning it into a half volley and just steering it into that forward of point gap. Nine runs off the over. Going past the outside edge as Kerr just giving herself room outside of league stump. Again, looking to target the point region. Completely understandable. Just missed the ball. Bit of length, though, by Gibson. A bit of length. Just dragged it back a wee bit. Not easy for Kerr to get on top of that bounce. Gibson running in again from over the wicket will bowl Kerr coming down tries to over hit the ball drags it through the mid wicket region was targeting straight gets a single retains the strike after four overs New Zealand chasing 178 a 27 for the loss of one
Hi, Paul from Waterforce. As a customer, you want it all. The backing of a national operation with a local operator that knows your water needs. That's why thousands of Kiwis just like John Richmond have chosen Waterforce as their water management partner. So I would recommend Waterforce for anyone else. They're just pros at what they're doing. They made it pretty seamless and easy, really good to work with and um, happy to compromise and change things to, to suit our system. Visit waterforce.co.nz today to find out more. Our coverage on SCNZ of the 4 20 International with Rosine. Quality paint and colours for your summer projects. 178 is what New Zealand need to win the game. 27 for the loss of one. And add this into your equation, Mr Jacob Borum. Uh, Sophie Devine is allowed to return to the field, as you rightly called after the fifth wicket. Or, or, Charlie Dean's going to start her first over from the Van Stand End and she bowls a pie. Short, wide, down the leg side. And it's out and around the corner. The thin and no, it's not even hit by Kerr. It's four wides. It's the steak and cheese variety that I had for Gilberta yesterday. 31 for one. I don't mind a pie. Ooh. Feeling partial on a road trip. But not Oops. like that. That is that is short down leg. In fact, Kerr will be disappointed she didn't catch up with it with two inside the ring there behind square. Dean bowling downwind. Much better the second one, but it's flicked away nicely. Forward of square. Long chase. Our corner around to her left. Good fielding in the deep. Is that Nats of a brunt? What can she not do? She prevents a boundary. Two to the New Zealand total. 31 for the loss of four. Curse 17 off 15. But as Sophie Devine, according to her match operation, it's either after the fifth wicket or six minutes after three. Whatever comes first. I would certainly hope New Zealand are not five down yeah. in 16 minutes. I was just although, that. although we did see five for eight off 16 balls in game number two. Well, you were pulling your hair out of that. Well, it's, I think that's a good result then, you know, like that time issue, I mean. Mm. Dean, the off spinner, ball short and it's pulled away, down to the boundary for four. Charlie Dean has been really good so far in the series, just struggling to settle in in her first over. And it's good one for New Zealand as Kerr picks up another four to deep backward square. It's lovely batting, it really is. It's a tough field to bowl to for a, the off spinner, especially an off spinner who does tend to bowl quite quick because all Amelia Kerr needs to do is get something on it and use that pace, especially behind square. And that's where she's targeting. 11 balls off the first two. 11 runs off the first two. Swept away. Beautifully taken at backward square leg. Sophia Dunkley hitting high on the bat. The pace not there for Kerr. And Charlie Dean gets the wicket. And that's a massive one. Kerr goes for 21. You 38 did. for two. Sorry, Daniel. You did right, though, that you took the pace off. The earlier deliveries where Kerr had managed to get it behind square and even the wide down the leg side were faster. And that was just a little slower and probably a different line as well outside the off stump. Kerr trying to access that leg side square leg boundary again. Could only find Dunkley at backward square. And a nice catch, just sort of jumping to her right, top right. And unfortunately for New Zealand, Amelia Kerr is out. And a 38 for two New Zealand. And Manny Green arrives to the middle. The player knows this venue well. In the number of years with Wellington, of course. Before back to Auckland. 38 for the loss of two. Batting inside the power play. Very, very experienced player now. 91st International. T20 International. Oh, she's going to have to do something special here for New Zealand, you would think. Long way off this target. 140 runs to be exact. 38 for the loss of two. And both Bates and Kerr out. Dean starts to green. Short and it's pulled away. England have adjusted the field. Dunkley, who took a catch at, at square leg, moving to a right, has gone back to deep backwards square and gets... A, gets uh, Green underway with a single. Might have had a second grab if she was inside the circle there, but mm. that's it's a big if. I'm not sure if Green plays that stroke. But it was a good catch by Dunkley, wasn't it? It was high into a right. It was a good catch, yeah. She had to time that jump well. It had to be spot on to make sure she was able to get the height. Zodenho comes down the wicket. It's powerfully. Great fielding from Dean. Low into a right. Gets a right hand down and takes all pace off it. It trickles behind her. A single will see New Zealand move to 40 for the loss of two. But Zodenho... Moves to eight off six. 
It's got over so far for New Zealand, apart from the wicket, actually. <laughs> what am I saying? Any time you lose Amelia Kerr, it's not a good over. That's a bad But over. 12 off the four balls. So in terms of run rate, or 13 off five, in terms of run rate, it's what they need. They managed to drag the run rate required down to just take over nine. Good signs. There's a beauty that goes past the outside edge of Matty Green's trying to open the face run. It's a short third man. The end of the over. Uh, 13 runs off the over, but Tamili Kerr had to go. New Zealand 40 for the loss of two, chasing 178. The hallway with dated wallpaper. Yeah, some people might call it chic, but to you, it just looks tired. What's the easiest way to remove old wallpaper, though? Are you putting off your decorating project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask the team at your local Resine Colour Shop for all you need on the best wallpaper, prep and hanging techniques so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with Resine. 40 for the loss of two New Zealands. Our coverage with Rosine, the paint professionals use. 138 runs needed from here. Only 90 legal deliveries available to them. Nat Silverbrun's going to come back into the attack from the Government House end. The first ball is a leg side uh, wide. Good take, though, by Jones. Tumbling away to her left. It's a lovely take. She's a very good keeper, Amy Jones. In fact, you wait till she stands up to the stumps, to Eccleston and whoever else is going to bowl slow. She'll probably stand up to all the bowlers towards the end. Or even the quicks too. But great hands, yeah. very soft hands, good mover. Here's a slow ball bouncer that hits the shoulder of Pazodenhout is through the stroke. The ball dives on Jones. This time has to go alertly to her right and does an equally good job. Might have hit her in the head. Oh no, the back. Yeah, you're right, shoulder, back. Although... No, no, it was the head. We've got the obligatory concussion test for it. What was probably a glancing blow. It's shoulder then onto the back of the helmet, I think, on the GJ Gardner Holmes replay. And bizarre to it looks OK. Of course, you never quite know. It's all Glenn. Go out for a catch in game number three, land and whack her head, then bowled and over, then obviously felt a little bit unwell, yeah. left the field, well, was incited again and... Is missing today through concussion as well. Is that now? It's having a laugh. She's got a smile. So I think she's okay and she's almost probably a little bit embarrassed that she has to have that check. But it is protocol and it's the right way to go about it. You never know, do you? No, you're right. So I don't know. Good in the last game. What was it? 34, I think, from memory. 34 of 26. Fascinating sort of player in this, and anyone as an opener is really important in T20 cricket. It's a player who's spent a lot of time as a wicketkeeper in her career, and he's only sort of carrying two keepers, which is unique. Leans forward as she's back into her work with a uh, compact sort of defensive prod, back to the bowl and no run. Well, we spoke about it just after the toss around how busy she is. The, the funky areas she can hit into, the different areas, the, the different sort of approach that she's got to the likes of Bates or Kerr. She's outside the square a wee bit, and I think see, even then... She's wandering down and then gets down very low and almost sweeps a ball away on leg. Stunt really powerfully down towards long leg for a single, but there's a lot of moving parts there. A little shuffle forward, pivoting on the sweep, 42 for two. You're right. I mean, a more, what should we say, like more technically focused players probably trying to stand up and hit that straight, whereas Zodenhout's shuffling down, then almost a length ball sweep shot against a seamer. And you're right, she actually hit it really well. If she'd managed to pierce those two fielders, deep square and fine leg would have been four, but unfortunately straight to fine leg. I bring Matty Green on strike, batting at number four with uh, no divine at the moment for New Zealand. The right hand awaits. She's uh, forward and pushes up towards uh, mid-off and there's no run. Massive innings here for Green, isn't it, really? You know, chasing a big score... The odds are probably against you, let's be honest, but still a really good opportunity to lay down a marker for Matty Green's spot in that middle order and say, yeah, I can get 60 or 40 or 70 or 45, whatever it may be. She's down the wicket trying to head over mid-off's head and Fortune favours the Brave, getting it on the back of the breeze, hit it high on the bat, so it just ballooned over mid-off's head, but it was hit well enough. And that's something I'd like to see more from Matty Green earlier in innings. The odder is taken. Gets a boundary, 46 for the loss of two. 
that scoreboard pressure might actually just sort of free her up early in the innings. I think the feature of this series is the amount of ball she soaked up and trying to get going. Well, risks are required. <clears throat> so that sort of a shot there is, is a nice shot. It's a great shot. Good timing. Good movement. Now, flick off a hip down towards fine leg, looping away down towards the fielder. That's uh, Alice Capsey. That will see the end of the six over. New Zealand again. Good scoring rate inside the power play. Big target, the chasing though, 47 for two. Racing season starts now. Charge out the gates with 50 bucks in bonus bets on us. Join TAB, deposit $10 and get $50 in bonus bets. Sign up at tab.co.nz. New customers only. T's and C's apply. R18 bet responsibly. Busy making a crease in the sofa as you watch batsmen at the crease? Well, you won't want to risk leaving the couch because you might miss this ball, the next ball, or the delivery after that. Best get your dinner delivered instead. Maccas, we deliver. SCNZ live from the base from reserve with Rosine, the paint Kiwis trust. New Zealand chasing 178. After the power play, a 47 for the loss of two. At the same stage, Jacob Warham, England were 35 for one. So New Zealand 12 ahead. The problem is... So we're going to win. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> New Zealand might be down Sophie Devine too. And uh, oh, yeah, the true. best bowler in the world's coming on. Sophie Eccleston back into the attack, back into the side rather. Yeah. After her break, after the uh, WPL. Let, let's save the best bowler in the world till after the power play when the field spreads and that run rate still needs to be yeah. going at around about double figures per over. As always, bowling with Sunnies round the wicket, beautifully yeah. fighted, straight on the money first up. Pushed up towards but on no run. And the confidence in her quality from herself, but also the captain here tonight, to have mid on, mid off up. And to say, OK, come at her, yeah, if you want to come down the wicket, use your feet, try and hit straight, good luck. A unique bowling style, isn't it? Just a couple of paces, she bowls, low full toss, hit up towards mid-off, there's no run. In fact, you combine her with Glenn, the, the most minimalist of spinners. Like, literally, it's like bowling from a standing start, mm. isn't it? But so, so good, both of them, both inside the top five. I think fourth for Glenn and number one. The best going around, Sophie Eccleston. And what a career in T20 cricket. 109 wickets in 76 games prior to this. Average of 15. Economy rate 5.86. Here's a sweep that just misses leg stump by an inch, if that. Yeah, those are serious numbers. I mean, sort of a, a wicket a game is considered good, you know, probably better than good. And if you, what did you say, 100 and something off 79? 109 and 76 matches. Strike rate. Picks up a wicket every 15 balls. There's a little dab, late cut, straight into heavy traffic. There'll be no run there. Just coming back to her action, though, I mean, she's a tall girl. Same with Glenn. You know, they're yep. quite tall, big girls. I don't mean that, but in, that's no disrespect whatsoever. They're tall girls. They look strong. You know, they're not... They don't need a big run-up to create that momentum into the crease. Well, fight it outside of uh, off stump, but it's uh, hit high over mid on. Creeping out towards the boundary, Gibson, good athlete, slides, flicks it to Siva Brunt, who applauds. Eccleston gives a big thumbs up as the Zodenho comes back for two. I mean, spinners will create a lot of, they've got the run up, sure, but you still need to have a lot of energy and momentum actually on delivery through the crease. And she's good enough and strong enough to be able to do that. But quicker, fuller, outside of off stump, under the bat is Bazzone and Hope trying to sweep again. Good revolutions on that one. Three runs off so an Eccleston, shall we call, call it? We'll just call it an Eccleston. It's 50 for the loss of two after. Able to do that. But quicker, fuller, outside of off stump, under the bat is Bazzone and Hope trying to sweep again. Good revolutions on that one. Three runs off so, an Eccleston, shall we call, call it? We'll just call it an Eccleston. It's 50 for the loss of two hours. Hey, Paul here from Waterforce. Keeping your lawns, gardens, parks, subdivisions, sports fields and golf courses looking green and lush is what we do best. We're also experts in... Pushing up into this breeze. Long on is back. Deep mid-wicket. Deep backward square. Also deep point as well. Look like Green was looking at mid-off. Can she get to the pitch? Dean's hard to come down to, it seems. There's a reverse sweep that hits the glove and balloons straight up. And Jones takes one of the easiest catches she will ever. And Charlie Dean celebrates and then recognises, maybe I should appeal, because I don't think anyone else had appealed. 
it was that obvious. And Green goes, caught behind for seven, and it's 50 for the loss of three. Well, I thought to myself, Dean will probably prefer bowling into the... It's, it's a win, but it's not that strong anymore. But I just think it'll hold her pace up nicely. And if she can find a length, it'll be tough to hit. And she found a length there. I don't mind Maddie Green's shot, a reverse sweep, which she's really brought into her game this season. We saw it a lot for the hearts and already for New Zealand this summer. But when you get it wrong, you get it very wrong and you expose yourself, you look vulnerable. And unfortunately for Maddie Green, she is out for seven. And the third wicket down for 50 runs for the Wyfoons. And with the time at th three minutes after three when the wicket fell, and Sophie Devine issues to bat cannot come out. So either five down or six minutes after three. So Brooke Halliday comes out. Well, it's going to be on time, isn't it? Let's not be too pessimistic. No. Absolutely certain there won't be five down. But Dean has two for 13. What I enjoy about watching Dean, Glenn, Eccleston, they all have lovely loop to them. They are putting the revs on the ball, but they're really hard to get down to the, down the wickets mm. too. You think you're there, you're not quite there because they have a, obviously lots of tricks in them. But lovely that, sort of looped away, Dean. Dean. She bowls from such a mm. high sort of release point, almost behind her head. She's in again, bowls, and Brooke Halliday leans forward and pushes through mid-off and gets underway with a single straight away. 51 for three. When we played them for the New Zealand A series in a warm-up game against, and the players who faced her, the girls who faced her said, yeah, she's fast through the air, but you still feel like it's an off-spinner, yeah. not just someone bowling seam up, or slow sort of medium pace, if you know what I mean, There's the difference. Revs on it, yeah. There's still revs on it. It's still the trajectory of a spin bowler. It's just quicker, and I think you're right, she's got such a nice, tall, high action. It's a genuine off-spinner's action. It really is. It's uh, leg side here. It's flipped around the corner nicely past short fine leg uh, towards Dunkley. It's around from deep backward square and they'll come back for two. Uh, 53 for the loss of three. Sort of shades of Graham Swan's action. I see. Yeah. yeah, yes, it is actually. Mm. Like almost past the perpendicular, I think they call it, where you. Yeah, um, but. What I was going to say, for just such good accuracy, and that's the sign of quality. It's like when you're batting, can you execute your shots more often than not? Yes, you can. You're a good player. Same thing with bowlers. Can you bowl the ball where it's supposed to go more often than not? Wider of off stump, and it's swept away powerfully into a gap for four. But Zodano thumps that one. Lovely strike. 17 to her name. It's 57 for the loss of three. And see, that's a lovely shot, as Aiden Howe. There really is nice execution of the sweep shot. Good power on it. Danny White had no chance out there at Demon Wicket. But you see that Bazaden has got to play a really good shot to that good delivery. Whereas sometimes with New Zealand and other sides around the world, you get some bad balls to hit. Team quicker through the air, much quicker. Angling in towards leg stump was looking for an LBW shout. Maybe expecting a similar type stroke. It's turned around the corner. A single will leave New Zealand after eight overs, chasing 178. 58 for the loss of three. Imagine a deck where you can invite people around to enjoy the afternoon. The deck looks good and no one slips on the mould. Are you putting off your painting project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask the team at your local resine colour shop for all the help you need on the best wood stains, prep and staining techniques for your project so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with resine. Live cricket with uh, Razine, the paint Kiwis trust. Here the night into the attack, uh, the English captain replacing uh, Eccleston, who bowled one over for an Eccleston, three runs off it. And from the Vance stand in, with her off spin here, the night's first ball, slower through the air, dancing down the wicket, but dragging it on site. Zodan home, there will be a single, 59 for the loss of three. The start of the ninth over, England with 54 for the loss of one. So we're still going to win. Based on that comparison, but I think Knight's come in as the second offie for Halliday, the, the left-handed, the the sole left-hander in the New Zealand team, I think. Yeah, and immediately yep. around the wicket. Yeah. And then last over, to Dean actually had a slip in place. They don't have here to the off-spinner, but understanding with the ball turning away from the left-hander provides an opportunity for them. Halliday leans on a bat, waits for Knight. Slower through the air, she's pushing on the up, past the diving. 
Who was that? I think that's Dean. Charlie Dean, isn't it? Yeah. Picks herself up. She's been on the ground a lot today. <laughs> she has. Couldn't prevent the ball trickling out towards long off for a single. Here the night with a very long run up by the English bowler standards. Good three or four paces. Here's another sweep and powerfully play, but uh, well positioned field. Dunkley at deep back with square is there to prevent the ball reaching the rope. 20 to Zodenho. That's 61 for three. Halliday's just got to be careful here. Both her runs have come through mid off, but I think she's definitely looking for that. Just. They just slow it up or find a length. That Charlie Dean is at a very short. There's a drive squarer though into a gap at cover. Just mm. open the blade. Yeah, that's a better option, opening the blade to go squarer. But Dean is definitely sneaking in at a very straight extra cover. Almost if you picture it in between mid off and cover, but very short as well. I think they feel like they can get Brooke Halliday with a check drive or something like that. Caught and bowled, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Nelson. Yes, it was. Back yeah, to good the bowler. Call. Yeah. Just with Brooke's hard hands going at the ball early on. Back over the wicket. Zadenho tries the reverse sweep. It balloons to short third man. This is going to be tight. The throw comes in. It missed. And I think in fairness, the New Zealand pair were home. 63 for the loss of three. Our coverage with Rosine, the paint professionals use. 107 out is the target. So you're in that, uh, you're in the Kenny Loggins, aren't you? You're in the danger zone. So I wonder what the hell you were saying there. Over 10 runs. I like it. Over 10 runs and over. Halliday heading powerfully on the up. Not far There's from the Dean. Plan. That creeping extra cover. Single. The end of the over. Six singles off the over. New Zealand through nine is 64 for three. I've always tried to make good choices for my family's future and their happiness. Having an enjoyable and safe building experience is about choosing the right builder. So put your family in safe hands and choose GJ's with their proven track record. In over 25 years of business and with close to 23,000 builds, GJ's has completed every home we've ever started. A fact we're very proud of. Make a wise choice and choose New Zealand's most trusted home builder. GJ's, here today and tomorrow. Coming back into the attack, but this time from a different end, the number one T20 international bowler and women's cricket, Sophie Eggleston, who started down Breeze, but no, he brought to push up into this still pretty yes, so. gusty northerly. Plenty of sunshine now as uh, Alliday plays a look, nice looking stroke, full of length, leans into a check drive through mid on for a single, 65 for three. Unfortunately, though, I think Halliday's got to do more. It is a nice shot, and I know she's only faced, what, five balls, four or five balls, but has a left hand batter against the left arm orthodox, and I know we're talking about the best bowl in the world, but when you're hitting downwind and the ball's spinning into you, into your arc, I think this is where Brooke Halliday's got to take that risk and take that shot on to hit over long on or mid-wicket. Eggleston bowling to Bazzano against the bottom edge as she plays reverse sweet. Hits Jones' leg, goes out to short fine leg. They will get a single. 66 for the loss of three. So Eggleston will continue what around the wicket. I, I love her approach. She actually starts sort of, no, she's going to go back over the way to the left hander. It's, you know, when she's bowling around the wicket, she starts behind the umpire. And umpire Brown's quite a big man. Can't, can't see Sophie Eggleston. She actually pops her head out to lock. Here's uh, Halliday coming down the wicket, oh, beaten and flying. A lot of bottom hand, almost battled it straight back to the bowler. Well, Eggleston knows what Halliday's thinking. I mean, she's going to try and hit her towards that Don Neely scoreboard with the wind. I mean, the run rate required is now over 10.5. Here is a, a powerful hit towards the scoreboard mentioned by... Jacob Boren, but the placement is what it's all about. Splitting deep, long on, and cow corner. One bounce, four. That's a lovely shot. It's exactly what needs to happen. There's a couple of times today I've picked it, but it's exactly the way it needs to play is that the left hand has got to take the left arm orthodox on. She's got the wind behind her going in that direction. Got to go again. She gets a shorter ball and she uh, pulls just wide of Heather Knight. Is that a straightish mid-wicket? Out to the deep, and there is one more for Halliday, who's 10 off 8 at 71 for 3. Because the problem for New Zealand is we've, they've had a boundary off this over, and there's only one ball left, and they still haven't got the required run rate off this over. From around the wicket, very full of league, Eccleston. It's pushed into the point region. They've got one. The throw comes in. So after 10 overs, England 
was 72 for one. New Zealand a 72 for the loss of three. Back after the short break. The team at PGG Rights and Turf are all about the delivery of high-performance turf grass solutions. They've been in the business for over 40 years, so they know what it takes to deliver a top-quality result for your needs. From pro sports turf and turf landscaping, through to revegetation and erosion control, their highly skilled team knows every aspect of the turf and environmental markets. To find out more about how they can help with your turf grass solutions, visit pggrightsandturf.com. 178 is the target for New Zealand earlier today. England made 177 for the loss of three. Our coverage is with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. And Gibson right arm, medium pacer, back into the attack, who first from the Van stand end. Bowling to Bazodenheit, who backs way outside a leg stump. It's up a sleet mid off. Tamely, though, taken. Premeditated. Could not execute, though. And a soft dismissal on the end for Bazodenheit, who's gone for 23, and New Zealand slump a little bit further. 72 for four. That was all a bit weird. Really, Bazaden, how it gave herself a bit of room, and I thought she got a length and a line, or created a line to actually hit something, or hit that with a bit of power. And off the bat, I sort of saw it, thinking, where's it going to land over Midoff? Well, unfortunately, went straight to Midoff. And there was a lot of movement, a lot of huff and puff there by Bazaden, how just a 23 off 22. And New Zealand lose their, what is that, their fourth now, with only 72 on the board. Nizzy Gaze has come out past six minutes after three for the record, so I want to tell you something about Sophie Devine's status and whether or not she'll bat after leaving the field with a quad injury. 72 for the loss of four. New Zealand, though, needs to find a middle order, and here is a wonderful opportunity. That's what Halliday and Gaze have got to be thinking of themselves. Time for me to get a bit of a start. Well, even Hannah Rowe as well, throw her in the mix. You know, she has some batting talent. We just don't see it enough. There's opportunities. Gibson from over the wicket. Defending his gaze, sort of hop, skip and a jump almost as she pushes into the offside. There's going to be no runs. 72 for four, it does remain. England hit 104 runs in boundaries today. I've just done the math. 23 fours, two sixes. New Zealand, in comparison, have had to do a lot of running between the wickets to keep up with uh, where England were at the same stage. England exploded, though, over the last half of their innings over 10 runs and over here's a little scoop sweep and a very good one down to the fence for four from as he goes inventive goes across outside of off stump uses the medium paces angle and pace very nicely 76 for the loss of four well that's a great shot keep us standing up finally it was quite wide and we've got just a, a Gibson's just medium pace but what I like about that the most is the confidence to play it you know New Zealand are in a bit of a hole lost a couple of wickets Gaze comes out and second ball is lapping which is obviously one of her shots double ambulance coming down Adelaide Road pushing to backward point there's going to be no run sirens on there what's well, a triple don't see that too often hope everything's okay Always so much happening outside of the base reserve. Traffic at its typical standstill heading to the Mount Victoria Tunnel. Gibson, not at a standstill. She bowls short wide of off stump and it's uh, thumped away through to point where the fielder is positioned. That's Heath who's on the field. No Maya Boucher. 77 for the loss of four. One ball remaining in the 11th. No matter what happens here, really, obviously there's still a long way to go in the game <clears throat> and it's not over here by any stretch, but saying before about opportunities, for these two at the moment, Halliday and Gaze, Rowe coming next, even someone like Jess Kerr or Rose Ramirez, it's just opportunities to show that what they can do. And whether that's in a winning cause or they go down swinging, whatever it may be, I think the future of this White Ferns are, are the batters out there now, but also, while you've still got... Bates, Devine and Kerr at the peak of their powers, you need the next level to raise that standard and that's where the game or the team goes to that next level. Halliday is uh, cramped up, pushing up towards mid-off, there will be no run. 77 for the loss of 4, 11 overs, gone, the wicket and the over to Gibson who now has one for 15. Stay in the fence, she says. Stay in the fence and it would look so much better. But you have to admit, you're not sure where to start. 
Are you putting off your painting or staining project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask at your local Resine colour shop for all the help you need on the best stain, paints, prep, painting techniques so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with Resine. 101 runs from 54 balls. That is the equation for New Zealand. Our coverage here on SENZ with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. Nat Silver Bronze back into the attack. Her third over, none for 12 through two. Right arm medium pace starts with a short one that's pulled uppishly. Ballooning away to deep backward square. Landing a long way in front of uh, Dunkley. was sprinting in aggressively. And that's... That, I've, I've never heard a single... Uh, applauded so much by a few people in the bar stand. <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> the run's required an hour 100. Right. Ah, oh, knowledgeable crowd. Is but that what the, the commentator's <laughs> supposed to say? Why would you clap that? <laughs> I don't know. Silver Brunt's going around the wicket to Halliday, who uh, gets a top edge as she's trying to swivel pull. It's gone right in behind and down towards the boundary. It's kept in the field of play. Nicely done by Alex Capsey. And Halliday will Come back for two. Hard to set a field to that, 81 for four. We've actually seen a few. I mean, the previous ball was a top edge as well, and we've seen a few of those today, which again suggests the wicket does have a bit of pace and yep. bounce in it. Even though we're talking medium pace bowlers with the keeper standing up, it still means the ball's just standing up a wee bit with nice bounce, which is a good sign for run scoring. Hence, probably England getting 170 plus. It means there should be runs in this wicket. Bustling into the breeze is uh, a misstumping chance by Jones. It was wide outside of off stump. Halliday reaches for it. She's only just outside her crease, so she doesn't have a long way to go back. But Jones didn't take it cleanly. No, missed opportunity after talking Jones up a couple of times already today. We've talked a lot about the keepers. It's a bit of an off day or an off ball there for, for Jones, who is normally extremely tidy, very proficient behind the stumps. Halliday now hits uppishly over mid-off down to the fence for four. And it strokes like that. Make you think, is there a player in there? Really sweet stroke. Strike. To 12 she goes. Sorry, 16. 16, it's 84 for the loss of four. Well, that's a beautiful shot. It really is. It's good technique. It's just a check drive on the up over top of mid-off. A couple of bounces well hit. But what I'm surprised at is that England didn't have long off back. They've played the amount of series that the White Ferns have played England since Brooke Halliday started. I'm very surprised. If they change the field now, long off has gone back finally again because that is one of Brooke Halliday's areas. Slower this time. Beaten outside of off stump. She's tried to push through the gap at cover. Well bowled by Silver Brunt. Jones doesn't take cleanly again. Ball goes to short fine leg. No harm done. I'm sure if she's got an edge on that. Or well, just a play and miss, but again, a little untidy by Jones. 84 for four. Sort of a brunt bowls from around the wicket. Yep. Back cut, beating short third man. Long chase into the northerly breeze. Flick back in the field of play. Very nicely done by Val Dunkley, then drops it, and that will see them come back for three. Three to the New Zealand title to end the 12th over. 91 runs short. They're almost at the halfway stage. It's 87 for the loss of four. Back with more after this. Are you investing in advertising and not getting the results you need? Add digital billboards to your marketing mix for cost-effective, aspiring advertising with vast billboards. Visualise your brand up in lights 24-7, bold and bright. If you thought advertising on a digital billboard was too costly, think again. The vast team can have your business live within a day on a billboard that suits your geographic or audience needs. For advertising, think big, think vast. Vastbillboards.co.nz SNZ Live Cricket with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. 87 for four after 12 overs. Halliday's 19 off 14. Gay's six off five. Halliday on strike. Charlie Dean with her uh, off breaks back into the attack. Nice looking drive, but unfortunately straight to extra cover. No run. That run rate is at 11.4. So that's not great news. The other poor news if you're a New Zealand fan is that Eccleston's still got two overs left. <laughs> They're just holding her back for the the exact right time. Halliday comes down, just jams the ball. 
into the cover region once more. Can't beat extra cover. It's the fielder again, 87 for four. Dean has two for 21. This is her third over. She's bowled three one-over spells and switched ends each time. The uppishly just over extra cover. Let's go. Fielder that Jacob Warren said must be most interested when uh, Halliday is uh, playing. They'll come back for two, 89 for four. Honestly, I'd have two fielders there. You'd stagger them, maybe in terms of their line or even their depth. I, yeah. I just think it's such an area that Brooke had almost blinkered towards there. She hits it well, don't get me wrong, but it goes there so often. Betting on off stump and deep in the crease gets an outside edge. As Charlie Dean bowled very quick through the air, it goes to short third man, no run. I'd almost get rid of mid-wicket. Yeah, we've already... probably had it there now, but I'd almost have another cover there. Well, you've got a deep mid-wicket anyway, so yeah, a cow exactly. corner. Would be interesting. Dean, round the wicket once more, coming down, hitting into the gra, into the pitch and bobbling into the cover region once more, extra cover fields, no run, so... Well, that's five balls in this over, right? And four have gone in that area, mm. you know? Four dot balls and a two. Zella, need to get on with it, 89 for four, last ball of the 13th. This punch drive through the mid-off, so Halliday sort of shakes her head as she runs. And frustrated with the, the entirety of the over. So Dean, three overs, two for 24. 90 for the loss of four. Quickly look at the bowling figures. Lauren Bell's got two available, two. Jacob, one for 12 off two. Silver Bruns bowled three, none for 22. Gibson, one for 15 off two. Uh, Dean now has two for 24 off her three overs. Heather Knight, one over for six. And Sophie Eccleston, two overs, none for 11. And she's about to bowl a third by the locks. So that last ball of the last over for me is, is not just not good enough by Brooke Halliday. Who I rate and who I like, and there's more in her I know, but when you've only got two off five balls and you need 13 and over, you can't just push to long off for one. You know, you've got to be swinging away, and that's what I want to see here from Brooke. Interesting, Eccleston's coming round the wicket to the left-hander, but she's got to swing for the fences. Ones do not win the Wyferns this game. She will appear from behind umpire Brown. Ball's very slow through the air. Nice little paddle pull. Well, it's more of a sweep. She's really squatted down low and got it towards deep backward square as Halliday comes back for two. 93. Sorry, 92 for the loss of four. So we start the 14th over. That's better. That's trying to hit the ball where the field is on. And it's at least, you're talking about multiples of runs, not just an easy single down the ground to long off. That's what Brooke Halliday needs to do more of if New Zealand's got any chance, any chance of winning this game. Zealand is slipping off where England were at the same stage. It's a lofted drive over mid-off. Sweetly struck, tumbling stop in the deep. Nicely done at long off. Ball is returned and New Zealand can only get one run. That's Gibson. He really is good in the outfield. But that's better though. I mean, she's down the wicket, Halliday. She's getting to the ball in the half folly and hitting it with power. And it took a fantastic bit of fielding, diving way to her left by Gibson to just keep that to one. So three back on the onside for Gaze, the right-hander, and a long off. Four inside the circle. Gaze comes down, drives, picks out extra cover. No run. Nice sofa's the call from Jones behind the wicket. She's seen a lot of nice stuff from her over the years. Just so accurate. It's around the wicket again, slower through the air, and it's swept away around the corner, but no power. Bells around to her left. They'll get a single, though, the New Zealand here. 94 for the loss of four. Gaze moves to seven. 84 off 38. That's the equation. Seems rather unlikely on the face of it, especially we're assuming. Won't, won't see Sophie Devine. Halliday hits high towards long on, coming around to their right and taking the catch. Good grab, good field set. It's very struck, very straight at mid on. And it's easily taken around about waist tight. And Halliday departs for 25. New Zealand lose a fifth. It's 94 for the loss of five in the 14th. So Halliday's disappointed, considering her body language, but honestly. It needed to happen. It was either sort of four or out stuff, or six or out stuff. New Zealand need two boundaries and over to win this match. They need over 13 and over. There's no point pushing around for ones and twos and running hard. So Halliday did the right thing, trying to get the boundaries. Just not quite the execution, but that's the right approach. 
brings Hannah Rowe, another one of these middle order players who have potential, but we've got to see it. It's good cricket from the English, though. How, how straight long on is. Long off is, you know, back two. Mm. You, you, you want to hit in that area because you've got the big breeze at your back. They're well drilled. You can yeah. just tell with the angles, mm. you know, and... We, we were talking about that extra cover fielder for Halliday against the off-spinner who just kept getting hit, ball after ball after Well, they know what they're doing. You know, they've set the fields accordingly. Like I can say they're well-drilled. They're well-captained. Heather Knight is an outstanding leader, not only from a cricket knowledge point of view, but actually from her own attributes. Hannah Rowe, the new player, starts off driving back to the bowl and there's going to be no run. So right-hander wins gaze. That is the end of the over that saw the departure of uh, Halliday. New Zealand now after 14.94 for five. Get so much more with a great garage store from Garage Door. Every Aucklander deserves to have a strong, safe, secure Garador Auckland garage door. From Wellsford to Waiuku, Garador Auckland service the whole of Auckland and with a 10-year warranty, they're hard to beat. GaradorAuckland.co.nz Get so much more with a great garage door from Garador. Series slipping away from New Zealand. Our coverage with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. This outstanding English side to showing why they're so good. So a few flaws in their game. 94 for 5, defending 178. Bell back into the attack, full of length, driven into the ground by Gaze on the bounce to Bell. Gets right hand up and prevents a run being taken. Our coverage is with Rosine, the Paint Professionals use. I can't quite peer into the New Zealand dugout. But I see Sophie Devine, and there's track pants on. <laughs> yeah. The, that tells you everything you if need. If she was batting, she would have been out by now for sure. So I think that's uh, it's worse than we thought or she thought, or they're just being super cautious. Or Bow. Both. Bowl's very full. Gay steers a ball once more into playing surface on the bounce to wide at backward point. Throws to the non-strikers in. No run. New Zealand has lost well, Bates for four, Kerr for 21, Matty Green for seven. Zardenhout was the next to go for 23. We've just seen Rock Halliday gone for 25. No Sophie Devine picking up a quad injury while bowling. Short ball trying to go inside the line and scoop it over the keeper as Gaze. But uh, so often Bell well, was a cutter and it's slow to arrive through to Jones. Stop ball. And that run rate required, uh, Jacob Borum, beyond Johan Cruyff territory, more than 14 and over. 14.8. Mm. Yeah, start of this over 14, so a couple of dot balls at, or three dot balls. Gaze waits. Bell bowls. Short again. She pulls away, hitting bottom of the bat through mid-wicket, creeping out towards uh, Gibson. Single, 95 for the loss of five. One for the other. One. Short one for the over. Now it's by Corey Black. Of course, game number five on Friday, then into a one-day series. The series alive today. You know, I'm not sure if you elevate the T20 series over a one-day series, but... There'll need to be a change with Divine likely injured, won't there? Yeah. Pulled away by Rowe, hitting high on the bat. Um, through the mid-wicket region, there is only a run available. Well, who's on the sidelines here? Kasparik and Tohuhu, aren't they? They're the two not playing today. Carson. Divine. Carson's been in the squad. Carson's gone yep. back to the A's, so they're yep. just over the straight there and Nelson with the A's. But if Divine's out, I think you're likely to replace her with a batter. Um... Who that would be, not sure. Well, that's the great question for New Zealand cricket. Well, Michaela Gregg yeah. was in Dunedin, faced that one ball and yeah. got run out. Um, bow, bow, shorter, outside of off stump, hit uppishly wide of Heather Knight at extra cover into a gap. Should come back for two, and will do. So two more to Gaze, who moves to ten. It's 98 for the loss of five. And that is the end of the 15th over. So five overs remain. New Zealand needs something extraordinary. 80 to be exact. Back up for this. Hi, Paul from Waterforce. As a customer, you want it all. The backing of a national operation with a local operator that knows your water needs. That's why thousands of Kiwis just like John Richmond have chosen Waterforce as their water management partner. 
So I would recommend Water Force for anyone else. They're just pros at what they're doing. They made it pretty seamless and easy, really good to work with, and um, happy to compromise and change things to, to suit our system. Visit waterforce.co.nz today to find out more. New Zealand battling at the Basin Reserve, needing 178. They're 80 shy. Five overs remain, and Rowe drives nicely back past the bowler. Very straight. Should come back for two. Tumbling stop by uh, Gibson. Gets up, throws. And two will take New Zealand to 100. 100 for the loss of five in the 16th over. Rowe moves to three. England, after 15 overs, were 112 for two. So New Zealand not miles off direct comparison, but the way English, England finished, scorching finish, thanks to Siva Brunt, who continues to bowl. Slow ball, lots of bottom hand and a leading edge, loops the ball back over the bowler's head off the bat of Hannah Rowe for a single. 101 for five. Well, that's the point of difference, isn't it? I think for a long time we knew, you know, with only being one or two wickets down and some good partnerships, Bushier got herself and You knew they were going to get a good total, but... One, seven, eight. Shorter, slower though, into the back shoulder of Gaze, who has swung hard, but very early. He's almost facing the, the bowler when that's uh, hit maybe his shoulder. We didn't expect one, seven, eight. I was thinking around that 160, to be fair, and it was just that we talked about that, that vibe in the chain rooms of the momentum at halfway. Slower ball that's up, pulled away savagely through square leg for four. Nice stroke from Gaze. Yeah, it's a nice shot. It's a little bit telegraphed. Admittedly, Siva Brunt is changing her speed, but the length is fairly constant with it being back of length or short. Especially with this field set, all four back on the leg side, long on mid wicket, deep square, fine leg. It's a nice shot though by Gaze. Pull shot in front of square with some power. 105 for five. It's the 11th four New Zealand has had. I'll repeat, 23 fours, two sixes England. We I know we love counting it's boundaries. It's a big difference. We love counting boundaries against England. We've been doing that for years. Slower ball that's hit high towards long off. It's very straight again. Should go up another. No, it's dropped. Who was that? Eccleston. It's Eccleston, who's around. Sonny's on, can't believe it. Went in and then just popped out. But I tell you what, that's the first ball they decided to bring. Finally, go put long off back. You know, so we talked before about them being well drilled or didn't take the catch, but setting the fields and bowling to it. Here's now a towering blow towards uh, mid on. Problem is, long on's back, and Silver Brunt has to sprint off after it. Ball lands, and bounces, and spins viciously away from her. On an old pitch. <laughs> On an old pitch. Big puff of dust again. Another single, an odd looking single, 107 for five. And that is the end of the 16th over. Gaze is 15 rows on five. 71 needed off the final four. I've always tried to make good choices for my family's future and their happiness. Having an enjoyable and safe building experience is about choosing the right builder. So put your family in safe hands and choose GJ's with their proven track record. In over 25 years of business and with close to 23,000 builds, GJ's has completed every home we've ever started. A fact we're very proud of. Make a wise choice and choose New Zealand's most trusted home builder. GJ's, here today and tomorrow. 107 for the loss of five. Charlie Dean from the Van Stand End. Start to the low full toss. It's driven away by Hannah Rowe for a single. 108 for the loss of five. Jacob Orham alongside me. Uh, Daniel McCart. You talked about McCullough Craig as the next best. And if I, I look at Bizarre and Hunt and Gaze. Bizarre and Hunt's keeping. What level is it? I haven't seen her keep for such a long time. She missed a lot of that super smash domestic cricket because I think it was a broken finger, yeah. something like that. Um, it's a reverse sweep attempt that's missed. Obviously, the selectors are saying Gaze is the better keeper because they're picking her, unless, for what we know, but Aiden Howe's finger's still a little bit not if quite we... 100%, but not quite sure of that. But um... Here's another reverse sweep that's missed and into the stumps. Bold, Charlie D. Wanders off. Little smirk on her face. She has her third. And Gaze is bowls for 15 off 17. 108 for six. Second reverse sweep in a row. This one, just a hint of turn. Pitched outside off. Just a tiny bit of turn back in enough to clip the off stump. 
I, don't, I, I really don't mind it by Gaze because at least she's trying to expose an area where there's, there are no boundary fielders. And as we've said for probably the last, what, 10 overs, New Zealand need boundaries. And she was trying her hardest, Gaze. Not a bad effort. A couple of nice blows in there. She's now for 15 and New Zealand now 108 for six. As Jess Kerr to the middle to join Hannah Rowe. Well, they've already selected the squad for the one days as well, haven't they? So there, there won't be changes. And should there be, not sure. I mean, I don't mind the consistency in selection. I mean, you kind of need that. But at the same time, the injury to Devine probably gives an opportunity to, to one of the batters in the A's. Jess Kerr is going to turn her first ball she faces through mid-wicket for one run. 109 for the loss of six. But when I, when I see Bezodenhout and Gaze, I'm thinking you've got two players who surely... Maybe only one spot should go to, and well, Gaze has opened, and for New Zealand exactly. as well. So you, you, you are, I, I understand what you're saying yeah. for sure. So that's, and I'm thinking more ahead to a T20 World Cup. He's a sweeper team from outside of off stump by Rowe misses into the pads. Well, that's a really good the T20 World Cup. You know, Bangladesh. Bangladesh we're probably going to see three or three spinners, yeah, maybe New Zealand four. Use four quicks generally. Mm, in this. That won't be happening in no. Dakar. Rowe is bold, comes down the wicket, tries to hit across the line. She misses Charlie Dean. Is deadly Dean today. She's got four for. She finishes her four over spell with quite brilliant figures of four for 26. She started off by getting rid of Mealy Kerr. She finishes up by getting Rowe, deceiving it right from the off, through the air, off the pitch, everything. New Zealand 109 for the loss of seven at the end of the 17th over. Strange dismissal. Anna Rowe coming down the wicket, using her feet. I, th I think a little late to come down, to be fair. Just looked a bit hurried, and because of that, almost normally you come down the wicket to hit straight with a straight swing of the bat. That was there. It was almost across it. If you almost picture a dancing pull shot, <laughs> which is always tough, and uh, unfortunately for Anna Rowe, she missed it. And they hit her bails, and she's dismissed. New Zealand now, two in that over there, 109 for seven. They are, and Rosemary Mayer came out. Nelson played a couple of glorious straight drives, and I was well, thinking, why have you been hiding it down the bottom? Well, a picture, you know, <laughs> her bowling's gone well this season, but her batting is also, I yeah. think it's that confidence in her bowling has dragged her batting with it, but one thing for certain, we won't be seeing too many dead bat dot balls with these two, <laughs> especially Jess Kerr. I don't think she's ever defended a ball in her life. Well, she waits and she holds that bat up with, you know, sort of anger. She looks up and she sees uh, Gibson bowling a wide Yorker, good bowling. Gibson hits that ball so mm. well, that length so well. She's a handy cricketer. She kind of gets lost in the rest of their stars, but my word, she performs a role for them, a very important one. Into this, the 18th over, 109 for the loss of seven. England will wrap up the series with one to play. It will be Gibson again from the Adelaide Road end. Yorker dug out, skirting to backward point. They've got one run. It would have been tight. Rosemary Mayer was a little bit late to move, but uh, luckily for her, Danny Wyatt didn't pick up the ball clean. I think Wyatt was already thinking of throwing at the stumps. To come back to the Sophie Devine injury thing, <laughs> I don't think we've had a chance to finish that. Yeah. You would think, you know, I talked about consistency of selection in the current group, which is fine. If you're going to have that same theory, then if you are going to bring a replacement in for Divine, and you, like I said, I think there's enough bowling cover where you need a batter, then it's got to be Michaela Gregg, I would assume. Yeah, 110 for seven. Here's a little scoop sweep attempt that's going to land in front of short fine leg single. 111 for seven. Caitlin Blakely's been doing well for the A's in a couple of matches she's played for them. But we're not talking people racking up. 70, 80, 100, you know, we're talking 30s, 40s, so but at the moment, they, that might be good enough to get an opportunity, and, and I think at some point you have to expose those players and see what they've got They're Powerfully towards Whitish mid on by Kerr, they should come back for two and will do so, Kerr will move to four, 100 and 13 for the loss of seven wickets. Just two balls remaining. This the 18th over, and it is the one area that that's so obviously lacking in depth. And, you know, when it, when I hear players talk about the depth in New Zealand cricket, Sophie Devine's been on the record. Some pretty interesting remarks in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> um, 
Is my mic on? It's a low, <laughs> low, low full toss spotted away towards Long On. I had Anna Corbin on a couple of days ago, and she felt like, yeah, she's probably saying what's truthful, but not sure it's particularly helpful in the public discourse when those young players hear those comments coming from their skipper going on, my skipper doesn't really rate me. Well, that's what I would think, being the mentally fragile individual that I am, Jacob. You know that. 114 for seven. Gibson in again. Length four hit high towards Long On. Coming in, sprinting in. Won't get there as the ball uh, pitches. And they'll come back for two. Good running from Kerr. She runs into Gibson. Everyone's okay. Two runs to end the over. 116 for seven. Two overs remain. Ah, that gloomy second bedroom. All it needs is is brightening up. So how do you get started? Do you need to seal the walls before you paint? Are you putting off your painting project because you're not sure how to do it? Ask the team at your local Resine Colour Shop for all the help you need on the best paints, prep and painting techniques for your project so you can get your DIY to-do list done. It's time to get decorating this summer with Resine. 116 for the loss of seven. Kerr is five, Mayor is on three. Eccleston from the Van Stand end, bowling very slow through the air and fighting an aggressive stroke. Kerr doesn't need an invitation to do that. She hits it out wide through mid off, but only for a single as Dean does that. Nice work in the deep. 117 for seven. To save Eccleston's last over for the for the nineteenth. Good luck trying to get runs off off this. But again, <laughs> top top marks to hear the night the way she juggled her bowlers. A really good captain. Low. What's well, a Yorker to an advancing? I was going to describe that as a low full toss, but it's perfect length from Eccleston. It slices off the bat of Rosemary Mead, a short third man for a single. 118 for the loss of seven. Still a long way off. 60 runs shy of the target, which is 178. The game's been long over as far as a contest. Curse, log, sweep into a gap. And on around again, those angles perfectly looked after in the deep. With deep mid wicket quite straight, long on, also out there. But again, Gibson so fast around the bat and picks it up on the move. Good throw. Strong arm. Good athleticism down there. Going across her stumps and hit just outside of the line on the pads. The ball deviates behind Jones. They'll get a leg by, but that's why there was. No appeal. Mia completely deceived through the air by this wonderful left arm finger spinner and Sophie Eggleston who is just typically miserly figures of one for 18 or 3.4. Here's a shot to the onside through midwicket by Kerr. Another single. When you see this and you think back to the, the end of that English innings, you know, the, I mean, Jess Kerr in particular here is swinging hard. Hannah Rowe tried. Rosemary is doing it now. Brooke Halliday, for example, had a couple of nice shots then caught on the bounty. And you think back to the, the way Siver Brunt and Knight finished and their ability to frequently hit the boundary. Just the point of difference. Low, full toss, driven into the ground. And Eccleston's quickly across to her right. She almost cleaned up Jess Kerr. The end of a brilliant four-over spell from the best going around. One for 19 off her four-overs. New Zealand a 121 for the loss of seven after 19. Get so much more with the great garage door from Garage Door. Auckland, 10 years warranty, real security. Garage Door. Auckland, quality, real durability, servicing you since 62. Get so much more with the great garage door from Garage Door. Auckland. 121 for the loss of seven. Our coverage with Rosine, the Paint Kiwis Trust. Bell into the attack. Slow ball wide of off stump, but pulled off the front foot through wideish mid wicket for a couple for Kerr, who's 10 off nine, 123 for the loss of seven. But just been thinking about your point you were ma- making about what's, well, you know, it's the craft of those two those two batters. They they had, in my mind, options A, B, C and D. New Zealand, I'm, I'm seeing here, granted, you know, lower order players, basically hoping the ball's put, in, put into their happy spot mm. and they can swing and swing hard. Bell from over the wicket. 
low full toss. It's the left leg of uh, Kerr. Trickles out through square leg for a single. 124 for the loss of seven leg by called. Yeah, it's not exactly comparing it apples with no, apples, no, but I, I understand what you're saying is that uh, you know, you're talking about two of the best of the world who have got three options to the same delivery. Against a, a good attack. Yeah. Against, it was just wonderful to yeah, watch. Yeah, I mean, they Painful were able to hit the, they were able to hit the same ball over mid-off and then over fine leg at the same time. Slower delivery outside of off-stump. Mayor went back, wanted to unload. Defeated, though, by Val. Kenny Bowling from the right arm quick. Single to the offside, 125 for the loss of seven. Balls remaining. Mayor is five of the non-strikers in. Kerr is on ten. Surely it won't take too long to think about who's player of the game. Boucher, right? Mm. Bouncer pulled uppishly towards deep mid-wicket. Sprinting and not getting there. Is uh, Bess Heath, who's been on the field for the aforementioned Maya Boucher, who picked up a quad injury whilst batting on her way to 91. The New Zealanders will uh, sprint back for two. Kerr will retain the strike. 127 for the loss of seven. Georgia Plummer, if there's an injury, if that injury is serious for Devine and she misses out, then probably Georgia Plummer is the next cab off the rank with her selection being pretty consistent recently. Bowl, bowl's full and it's uh, whacked away through mid-wicket. And once more to Heath. Kerr wanted to come back for a second, but that's really good fielding. In the outfield, they've been so good. My Boucher does a lot of that work. Danny Wyatt's good, but his heat's got in quickly. Gibson, you've already talked about, Jacob. The quick release and the throw was spot on. But also I look at it as well, like, Jessica's hit the ball pretty well, but it goes straight to the fielder. Mm. You know, like, the positioning of the field sets is, is really first class. Last ball of the game. Slow ball outside of off stumps. Hit up towards mid-off, and Charlie Dean's made a mistake. She's dropped a catch. And hurt herself, I think. Burst through the hands. It's not going to cost them dearly in the context of the game. New Zealand will come back for a second run. But this professional English side, who were bolstered by some truly world-class talent coming back into their squad, has just shown New Zealand their full hand of tricks. And they've run away. The game that was tight at times, but not long enough from a New Zealand perspective. England win by 47 runs at the Basin Reserve. Jacob Orman win the series in a bit of a canter. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it was a bit of a one-sided affair today. And while this English team is, is very, very good, they're, they're competing with Australia for the best in the world and creating this depth which is enviable for everyone else. Still thought there'd be more in the tank for this New Zealand side after winning a great game in Nelson the other day, but you come up against some of this quality and they're on their game. There's not a lot you can do. They fought hard. They did. They kept trying right through to the end. But unfortunately, just not quite there today, the White Ferns. And England run away with it in the end by a pretty wide margin. Was that 47 runs? Comfortable win for the English side. New Zealand obviously had things go against them. Sophie Devine had to leave the field with a quad injury after bowling just one over. She didn't return. She didn't even bat. Although she's leading the side out, hobbling a little bit. Looks like a right leg issue. She shakes now. Here the Knights hand as uh, they concede the series. England have it in the bag with one game to play. Uh, at the halfway stage of both innings, and I know this isn't always the best comparison to make, but England was 72 for the loss of one after nine. New Zealand 72 for the loss of three. But that... England have a middle order loaded with power and talent. New Zealand are desperately trying to find a middle order. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the complete opposite. It really is. We're quite top-heavy with our quality and, and experience with Bates, Kerr and Devine all in the top four, where if you look at the English, well, they have quality and experience through the whole order. Let's be honest. They're, they're a good side. But when you're able to have someone like Heather Knight, the captain, come in at five, Amy Jones at six, Dunkley, who's been around for now four or five years and batted at the top of the order at seven, that just creates just this confidence through your order to come out and swing the bat and continue to swing the bat even if things aren't going well. And I think that just filters through the whole change room, the whole squad. And next thing, you're going to 177 runs on the board and you're feeling pretty good about yourself giving the ball to, the, to your bowling attack. Let's uh, recap the full scorecard for you and get the thoughts of Jacob Orham about uh, some of the individual and uh, team-specific 
uh, angles on this game. As England uh, sent in after Sophie Devine won the toss and decided to have a bowl on it on a pitch that you know, didn't look like your traditional T20 wicket. There was a touch of green to it, lots of green grass, but underneath it was quite brown. Uh, and I think that green grass has just allowed good pace and bounce to prevail not only today but hopefully into Friday as well. Overall, you have to say it's a good surface with the amount of runs uh, England were able to, to post. 177 for the loss of three. They lost Danny Wyatt, who was caught behind off the bowling of Rosemary Mayer, who again was probably one of the brighter points from a New Zealand perspective. Uh, 29 for the loss of one in the fifth over, then a really good partnership between Alex, uh, Alice Capsey rather, and Maya Boucher. Capsey was having a day, she was sort of fighting herself, Jacob, uh, but at the other end, Maya Boucher, fresh off the 71 in game number three, even better today, 91 of 56. There were some real wow moments in that knock. There were wow moments because the microphone's right in front of my mouth the whole time, <laughs> and I can't hold some of them back, but I think she went to another level after Nelson. I mean, what we saw in Almost like a slow start in Dunedin. It was a bit chilly down there, I suppose, but a slow start there and then picked her game up in Nelson and then again went to another level here. I mean, some played some outrageous shots, or outrageously good, I should say. There was one in particular that I keep harping on about, but basically off a length ball off Hannah Rowe, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Over, over mid-on, all the way for six onto the embankment. Just a really nice strike of the ball. But doesn't try to overhit it either. No, but we we saw from Boucher um, and Siverbrunt and Knight in particular, this ability to hit the ball, you know, behind the wicket in particular. So New Zealand would adjust their field accordingly and drop third man back or finally back, suddenly leave cover up or mid-off up. And then the ability to turn the ball back around that way and hit it where the field is weren't was just actually really great to watch from just a technical batting point of view. It's not just swing hard and hope for the best. It's a good side. We know it is. They had too many runs today against this wife side who had, were down Sophie Devine and just their quality came through in the end. Yeah, and over the last 10 overs, they put on 105 runs, just to really exemplify Jacob's point. Uh, Boucher going deep into the innings. She was dismissed in the 18th over. It's really what you want from someone at the top, not only to, to add impetus with a strike rate of 162 over the course of her 56-ball stay. 12 fours, two sixes, some really beautiful strokes. Gone for 91, and then icing on the cake as they added 59 off the last five overs. And the last pair together here the night in Silver Brunt, I think got 35 or 14 together and it took New Zealand um, you know into that uh, that dreaded territory of chasing upwards of 180 177 for three Rosemary Mayer one for 28 of four overs Kerr none for 30 off four Hannah Rowe none for 23 off two I thought she battled a little bit for rhythm into the breeze Fran Jonas one for 39 off four Divine one over but uh, none for eight. She had to then leave the field. Kerr expensive by her lofty standards one for 42 off four Susie Bates none for six off one I don't think they bowled poorly, though. No, they were okay. They really yeah. were. I mean, they missed the areas at some point, but then, unfortunately, against good players, when you miss, you go the distance. You know, you don't miss and get half hit for one out to the boundary field or against r the best players in the world. This is men's and women's. If you're not on your game and you miss a little bit, you give them width or you give them length to get under, then you are going to go to the boundary. Against lesser players, you'll get away with it. They miss hit it, they chunk it, they, you know, shank it out to a fielder and they're going to go for one or two. So instead of an over going for 15, 16, like happened today, it only maybe goes for seven or eight and you feel okay about yourself. So some tough lessons today, but to, to answer your point, I don't think they bowled badly at all today. Like, you wouldn't look and go, yeah. oh, yeah, that was that was average. They, Of course they yeah. should have got hit for 180, you know? What was poor was the field. <laughs> yeah. Four chances by our count to Boucher, um, including one in the first over. When a ball, OK, it fizzes, it goes quickly, slashing drive between first slip and keeper. But that's why you've got them there, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. That's why you've taken the gamble mm. to have a slip in. Mm. You look like a genius. Uh, and there were some other chances. There was a misstumping chance. There was some, there was some untidy ground feeling. I think that's probably the most dis disappointing aspect of today. I always felt 178 was beyond them against this really good English attack, especially once you know it became clearer that Divine uh, wasn't going to be there. But I think if they reflect back in the fielding effort, that, that's that's what's really made it a great total for England. Yeah, it was it was it was poor. Let's be honest. You know, we can't sugarcoat it when you miss that many opportunities and. Out of them all, 
were any of them kind of 50-50 if they were taking would they be classed as spectacular no they all they all, but none of them were sitters as well they were in that yeah, good catch, in that Jerry range Josh. between yeah. sitter and spectacular <laughs> but but you need to take them and when you do take them suddenly instead of 178 as I think I said during the game you're not chasing 178 you might be chasing 155 but you feel so much better about yourself and the run rate doesn't immediately go to 8 9 10. It might hover around eight for a little bit longer, and it's it's a lot more manageable. But the, the game just got away far too, you know, quickly. Well, not quickly, but towards the back half of the innings, the game was basically wrestled away by England. There was no chance of coming back. You know, like I agree with you, one seven eight with a divineless team, always going to be too far. Yeah. So chasing one hundred and seventy eight, New Zealand lost Susie Bates in the first over, caught at mid wicket, just turning that and to the onside, leading edge, ballooned to mid-wicket, even before she's uh, caught. You can see her sort of shoulders drop. Mm. She knows that uh, she'd given the English one. Nat Siverbrunk was not going to drop it off the bowling of Bell. Uh, Millie Kerr came out. Bright innings, 21, but not long enough. Off 17 balls before she was caught. Dunkley bowled Dean. Ms. Odin Holtz uh, was starved of strike, really. She spent a long time 43 minutes out in the middle for a 23 off 22 before she was caught Dean off the bowling of uh, Gibson. Matty Green was caught behind off the bowling of Dean trying to reverse sweep earlier and earlier in the for 7 off 9. Uh, Brooke Halliday made 25 off 23 before being caught in the deep but long on off the bowling of Eccleston. Uh, Izzy Gaze uh, bowled looking to reverse sweep Dean for 15 off 17. Hannah Rowe 6 off 8 before she was bowled by Dean trying to hit uh, a running Pull stroke, I think you described it as. Uh, Hannah Rowe, uh, very late in the innings. Uh, Kerr made 13 off 12. Rosemary Mayer made 7 off 7 with 9 extras. 130 for the loss of 7. New Zealand have finished. Lauren Bell, 4 overs, 1 for 24. Nat Siverbrun, 4 overs, no man, no wicket for 31. Danielle Gibson, 3 overs, 1 for 22. Uh, Sophie Eccleston, how miserly. 4 overs, 1 for 19. Uh, Heather Knight, one over, none for six. But Charlie Dean has the sparkling figures today. Four overs, no maidens. Four for 26. England have won comfortably in game number four by 47 runs. They wrap up the series with a game to go. That is coming to you on Friday before the three-match one-day series. England making a very imposing total of 177 for the loss of three. Uh, up top, it was Maya Boucher who was promoted from our first drop, where she played ever so well. Uh, in game number three with uh, a career best 71. Well, she went better today, 91 of 56. A short time ago, she spoke with TVNZ after being announced as player of the uh, player of the game. Thanks, Katie. There are plenty of impressive performances here today, but today's ANZ player of the match. It is Maya Bouchier. Maya, a fantastic innings from yourself. 91, new high score, back-to-back 50s as well. How much did you enjoy that? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, always great out um, to come out and, you know, put a performance on and, you know, to get us to a really good total is you know, one I want to do and, you know, getting that chance at the uh, top of the order is uh, something special. So, um, yeah, just to go and do that was brilliant. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, that promotion up to the top. Is it something that you enjoy the facing the new ball and, and batting in that power play? Yeah, definitely. I think also Danny with, uh, batting with Danny um, brings a little bit more confidence to me because I batted with her a lot. Um, but yeah, I think just going out there and, and playing with that intent that we've talked about, um, yeah, I think I did that pretty well. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would happen to agree with you on that. Talking about it though, Nelson didn't quite go to plan for the team, went well for yourself personally. How, how do you take that momentum into today's game? Yeah, I think, you know, going into each game, I look to try and just be positive and, um, you know, take those... Well, not failures, but, you know, improvements on. And, um, yeah, I think we, we want to make sure that we go out and, and try and better ourselves. And, um, yeah, to go into this game and, and to put on that performance at the back end as well with the, end, the other girls coming in and, and then finishing off the game at the end. You know, that's that's what we talk about is being ruthless. And we did that we did that today. Yeah, absolutely. You picked up a little niggle yourself. What is the news on that? Or was it just a good chance to put your feet up? <laughs> no, just a little uh, quad issue, but... Um, um, looking to, you know, get back to, for Friday. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Well, we hope to see you. It was a fam- fabulous performance today. Congratulations. Bob. Thank you very much. Well, Boucher, the uh, man... Oh, I was going to say man in the match. Ter- you know, that's from 2005. Player of the game, of course. Um, wow, what a knock. And just the ease for... The ease, some of the... Sh- the strokes didn't try to overhit it. There were check drives that fizz away to the boundary. A really talented player. And just what England need, another top-order option. 
Yeah, you, you, you heard her talk about, you know, getting the opportunity. Well, I think you've taken that opportunity. <laughs> Maya, well played. And she's fought off Tammy Bowman and Sophia Dunkley in terms of that competition for the, the top of the order spot. But she played so well today. Shots all around the ground off both pace and spin. It really was some good stuff, and, and we've sort of waxed lyrical about it, and I know it sounds like we're pro-England, but it's actually just some great cricket to watch. And she played so well and just built on what she'd done in Nelson, and, and she's got that little quad strain. I would suggest they're not going to risk her for a dead no. rubber on Friday, on Easter Friday, and hopefully get her right for the, the one-day series next week, and that might be a little bit of a pressure release for New Zealand, although then they'll probably bring in Tammy Beaumont or <laughs> someone like that to take her place. And, of course, uh, Sophia Dunkley's been doing a pretty mm. good job at the top of the order. Slid down to number seven. She's probably thinking, oh, dear. Um, right, pressure's now on me. And that's why this side functions so well, because there is a there is a cast of characters outside the circle who are always sort of pushing their case, and everyone uh, is on their toes. That's uh, why they're, they're such a high-functioning side, for sure, littered with great players and players who definitely desperately want to get into that uh, group. Time to hear from the, uh, the perspective the perspectives of both the captains. Let's start off with, unfortunately, the losing captain today, of course, is uh, Sophie Devine speaking with uh, TVNZ and Frankie Mackay. Sophie Devine, first up, it seems a bit of quad squad today. First up, how is yours? How are you going? Yeah, obviously, probably just a small niggle. Um, just looking at ahead with the one day is obviously being really important with IWC points. Uh, I probably wanted to get back out there, but um, probably someone with a bit more of a, a rational brain um, kept me off. So disappointing there, but uh, yeah, look, looking ahead. A, a little bit of a tough day for your side as well. How do you, how do you sum up today? Oh, look, I thought we were really poor in the field and, and when you get opportunities, you need to take them and we didn't do that today. So uh, we, we take those chances and it could be a very different different story. We could be chasing 150, 160. So uh, full credit to, to Maya again, though. She batted outstanding and, and was awesome. So for us, we've got to go back to the drawing board and, and figure out, especially playing with that wind and things like that, we've got to find ways of being able to, I think, shut off different sides of the park. Yeah, still one game to go in this T20 series. What are you what are you hoping to see? What are you hoping to get out of it? Yeah, look, I, I was actually really pleased to see the intent from an number of the batters that were going in. We saw players from ball one moving around the crease and trying to lap and ramp, which I think is really pleasing. We've been speaking about it at length as a group, so to see that positive intent is is really pleasing. I think to continue that on and, and just key partnerships, I think, with the bat and the ball, it's really important that um, to break the game open, you need those big partnerships. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for your time, Soph, and best of luck Friday. Divine, straight to the point. She's absolutely right about the field. Yes, she t- totally is, yeah. I mean, the one thing you can never doubt with Sophie is her bluntness, her honesty, you know, and sometimes to a fault, but she's not wrong. Like, and a couple of things for me that she talked about was the fielding just wasn't up to standard, and yes, things would have been differently, maybe not the end result, but definitely the total being chased. The other thing was about some of the quote-unquote intent, and I think that word becomes a cliche and used a lot in sport and probably in life, you know. It's almost like a safety net. If you show intent, it's okay if you stuff up. But she's dead right. Some players, especially younger players, I immediately think of Izzy Gay's second ball lapping for four. Like, okay, we're un- we're in a hole, we're under the pump, but are you still going to do what you can do and train to do? And today with Izzy Gay's, like, tick that box. Yep, didn't come off, only got sort of a runner ball 18 or 19, but at least she was willing to try those things. So credit to Sophie, she'll always tell you exactly what she's mm-hmm. thinking. And uh, she was on the money there. Well, in, in this form of the game, if you want to run with the very best, you've got to run at their pace. Yeah. And I also love the, the sort of... I detected a little nod to the quality of that English mm. batting lineup, who can hit all around yeah. the ground. You know, we've got to cut off certain uh, sections of the field. Yeah, she mentioned uh, the wind as yeah. well, I mean, yeah. which is it plays a part. And, and weirdly, I thought England played that better, considering they were the visiting team. You know, I thought they started at the right end. They bowled their spinners. You know, they keep changing everyone around. And... Um, but we've said it. We, how many times do we say it already about them being well drilled and polished and having this structure about them? They're, they're just a good side, full stop. Our coverage is with Razine, quality paint and colours for your summer projects. Uh, Heather Knight sets pretty high standards. I'll be interested to hear what she mm. said to TVNZ. England's captain Heather Knight, not winning tosses, but winning games. Uh, Another happy captain moment for you today? 
Yeah, really good. Uh, I think Maya again was outstanding just to, to see how simple she kept it and really good boundary options. The, the pitch was pretty bouncy actually, so adapting to that was really good. Um, and yeah, nice to kind of have a really good strong finish and take some momentum into the, the bowling innings. Yeah, I was going to ask a question on that, on conditions. How, how did you sum them up? You've got another couple of games still to play here. Uh, well, Windy Wellington certainly lives up to its name. Uh, certainly picked up at certain points and yeah, we're really clear on how we want to go about it. It's really important when the wind's swirling around and changes quite a lot during the match that you, you sort of locked into the moment and you're adapting to, to what's in front of you so I thought we did that brilliantly today um, but yeah a bit more pace um, I think our seam has adapted well seam was working quite well in the power play when you hit a good length board a lot of wobble balls managed to get a little bit of movement so um, yeah slightly different conditions than we've been used to but um, I thought we adapted brilliantly again and slightly different role for yourself coming in as the finisher how much fun was that partnership between you and, and Nat yeah, look, you, sometimes you're going to pay off, sometimes you're not in that role. You, you've got to uh, not have any fear of, of getting out, I think. So, um, yeah, it was really nice to, to kind of have that little cameo at the end, I guess. Um, nice to have Nat back in that, in that middle order as well. And, um, yeah, nice to hear, see her hitting it well. And the spinner's fantastic once again. How easy does that make your job, the control that they've got? Yeah, really easy. Obviously, we're missing Sarah today in, in those uh, key middle overs, and she's been so awesome for us. So, um, yeah, the other spinners really stepped up. And, um, yeah, it was, it was one of those pitches, actually, uh, I think seen was, was probably a little bit more effective and the spinners still found a way to, to really uh, make an impact on the game Charlie in particular because you know, there's those wickets towards the back end and, and obviously having Sophie in a, as well with the world class skill that she brings um, yeah really pleased I, I think probably couple of areas we can get better as well I think the fielding was um, not as slick as it probably has been in the first three games so um, yeah a couple of areas to, to keep working on keep moving forward but all in all um, series win and very happy team yeah well when you when you wrap up a series with one game still in hand it's always a good position to be in but what, what are you hoping to see one game left in this series what do you want to see in that last one from your side? I think not taking off the, off the gas. I think we've done some really good things in, in the series and we'd love to finish it 4-1. I think, um, yeah, we'll have to, to see how everyone is, uh, see how Myra is. She obviously had a quad um, little niggle, so she didn't field. Um, so, yeah, we'll have a little look, obviously, going into the one-day series as well. But, um, yeah, I really want us to finish finish this series strongly and make sure we don't take our foot off the gas. Excellent. Thanks, Heather. Enjoy your day off tomorrow here in Wellington. See Thanks, you Frankie. Cheers. In the night, setting very high standards. Mm. Wants to win 4 1. <laughs> she likes yeah. winning. And wants to see how Myers quad is. It's like, just rule her out now. You won the <laughs> series, rest her up. But that's high standards, but also it's like a different tone and narrative around it. You know, and I know they're winning and they're a good side with experience. They know what they're doing. But it's quite different to listen to isolated like that, the two captains, isn't it? You know, and just the, the words being chosen and used. Um, yeah. Bit of an eye opener, really. Yeah, and all the fronts are starting to work for them. Uh, I think she's right to, to pinpoint uh, the seam bowling group. Uh, Val, I thought, really good. Siva Brum, just what a cricketer. You know, he can open the bowling at bat number four in your T20 side. That just that, That's all you need to know. But Danielle Gibson's a really, really Good fielder, fine, too. Good fielder mm. and bowls a great length at the death. You know, hard to get away. Um, and they've just got really nice balance about them. And they have won the series with a game in hand. On the way of the White Ferns today, outclassed uh, England at full strength and you always felt these two games today and Friday would give a better indication of where New Zealand is at against the marquee sides and uh, they're some distance off in certain parts. There, there are things uh, that uh, should give uh, the New Zealanders uh, plenty of confidence but there are some glaring holes especially in that middle order uh, someone really needs to stand up and help contribute because the top order there are some fine players there but uh, a genuine sort of drop off when you compare it to what we have seen from England with the bat. So we reflect on the highlights of the game. It really all came in the opening uh, 20 overs of this game after England was sent in by New Zealand. Sophie Devine winning the toss and a player who's uh, sort of forging her own path in international T20 cricket, Maya Boucher, who was so good in game number three before England's late meltdown that uh, kept the series alive. While well, she was right at it from the very outset and led England to a, a match-defining toss Total of 177 for three. Let's listen back to the highlights of the opening innings. Ah! Not going to help that one because that's a short, long hot. That's wonders through mid-wicket. Can't bowl there to Wyatt. She likes Miss it short at that pace. And she has smoked it through to the mid-wicket fence for four. Right. Bowls and Busher hits high over long on on the back of the breeze. That might go all the way and does so. Hit towards the bottom of the bat. That loud ping you may have picked up on her effects, Mike. Quite a way to end the over. It's 22 without loss. 14 runs coming off the third. 
third man in long. And deep back to square. Here's an edge behind taken. Looking to play a cut stroke. It bounced on her. Danny White's not the tallest, but she found enough timber. And a wicket for Mayor and New Zealand. What? Eight on 14. What's she going to do? She's going to come down the wicket and hit up his sleeve. Glorious. Through on. Mid off. Out of defence for four. Long off his back too. Who had, what, eight, nine metres to get? But that hits the rope right in front. I really like this by the white ferns and Hannah Rowe. 73 for one. It remains. Rowe in again. Boucher comes down the wicket. Hits towards Long on. Just to the left of Matty Green on the half volley. Who does neither catch it nor stop it. Four run. There's a reverse sweep attempt and she's gone wandering. She's lost the ball she's going to be stumped. Fran Jonas went up for an LBW shout. Capsie was looking around. Where's the ball? Well it's perched right next to the leg stump. I'm not sure she's holding on to it. Here's a slog sweep out towards deep mid wicket. Six run. Don't need to run with the dodgy pot if you hit it like that, Meyer. 74. Stroke making ability right up there with the very best. Her first boundary. Only one back on the offside. That's it long off if you can play that stroke. Now hit to extra cover. Should be taken is by Bates. Again, you see the idea. She's seeing the field well. Looking for a gap. Went outside of leg stump. But just got the bottom of the bat. Couldn't get it over Bates. But Maya Boucher has been breathtaking at best in the series. She's got to go with inside of her maiden. T20 International 100. She'll be devastated at that. But 91 off 56. Here's a sweep over short fine leg, down to the fence for four. It's been a masterclass of hitting over the last five overs by England. And they post a very, very big score. 177 for the loss of three. It was a winning score, and by some margin, England winning by 47 runs. New Zealand not helped by their fat. The most uh, feared of their bats is uh, Sophie Devine couldn't take to the field after picking up a quad injury with the ball earlier today. New Zealand restricted to 130 for the loss of seven, but really it was about the English batting today. Boucher right in the thick of it with 91 off 56. She hit 12 fours. England hit 23 fours and two sixes over 100 runs, scored in Boundaries. You compare that to two New Zealand who look some way off on the power scale uh, themselves to start notching uh, about 10, 12 boundaries over the course of their innings. So England have won the series with one game to go. We look forward to bringing you all the uh, the action. Same time on Good Friday. Can New Zealand uh, pull one back? Under the end team on behalf of uh, Jacob Oram, uh, my name is Daniel McCarty. Wishing you a very good evening. Well done to England, the T. 20 series all wrapped up, three matches to one with one to play.